of studio audience. You think you're weird? I'm a new girl. It is the opening music. Oh, okay. Coming to you live from the Luscious Loins, Lapel, Indiana. My name is Bullshit. Hanging out always with Polly Punk. With us today is uh, Beagles Broke Down, and we are already amongst sound issues. Uh, (laughs) What else is new? The part of Peter Graves will be played by Wayne Burke. It's the iPhone on uh, Mr. Pennington. Speaking of Mr. Pennington, our our guest tonight is none other than Wayne Pennington. Hello. What's up, man? God damn it. I hit the wrong button. Uh, he brought with him Wayne Burt. I'll be playing the part of Peter Graves tonight. Oh, that's. that's... Uh, and uh, Mike Mankey showed up. I, I had to deliver a. Uh, uh, sorry. I had to deliver a, a tuner pedal to this dude who's playing oh, a gig God. at this place called. What was called? Uh, Something country up in Noblesville. So I thought, oh, sing this right show. on. So, uh, 60 bucks cash app. How was uh, Wayne's? How was your daytime brag, commute? <laughs> He's bragging about making 60 bucks. Well, I needed it. I didn't make I gotta, 60 I gotta bucks. Put, I gotta put gas in my car. Uh, I had to drive to lapel. My driving was fine, man. I drove from Indy. It's a good little drive. I drove with Wayne. He posted something yesterday. He's like, I want to be there as a co-host. And I was like, I will pick you up. <laughs> <laughs> we met outside of center point. Oh, yeah. right here, so that's pretty good. Did you have a beer prior to coming here? You were going to try to put a beer while we were me. setting up. While Shep was I testing drove here. Oh, all right. Which has worked out so well for me. Are these center point yes. beers right there? <laughs> that is uh, Center Point beer. This, there's there's this, beers uh, in the fridge there. Uh, oh. It's Wayne Birch character. Center Point Blood Center Point. They didn't Orange tell us about the fridge the last time paint. we were here, so I didn't. Well, oh, we usually don't share. Yeah, I, I didn't realize there was a fridge, <laughs> fridge here. Yeah, yeah there's fridge for sure. Oh, speaking of fridges, uh, where's my where's my Green. Oh my god, you are so worried about that fucking green scarf. I'm sure that I have the green scarf. It's been here for like a month and a half. I had to buy a new scarf. I had to buy a new scarf. That should be he needs that in case oh, I have a Margo I'm talking about like concert. whiskey or something. I'm like, you do a Margo concert. Yeah, right. but it never moves. Done. It literally, literally never moves. So. Right, so. Mike, are you wanting one of these beers? Yes. Okay. Yes. Which one do you want? We got Miller Lite, Hammy's, uh, Center Point. I'll center point. And, uh, I'll try center point. Heineken's. I'll try center point. It's good. Blood orange IP. Oh, it's the blood orange. I love that one. That's the only one I've actually had at the brewery before COVID. So, anyways, uh, Wayne Free. Pennington. Uh, What's up, man? So, uh, no. wait, Wayne, how was your daytime commute? We never got. I there. just drove to center point and you drive a smart car. I dr- I do drive a smart car. The thing is tiny. It is. So, Wayne Pennington, tiny you drive the smart. Woody. I drive the wagon. Yeah, that thing's sick. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw I was like, oh. yeah, that <laughs> big, was, uh, big Millennium Falcon hood ornament or something. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> that was a uh, Chops. That Who was Pork like, Chop Boyd's this really a millennium uh, car. Falcon. He passed away. I'm real happy to drive that thing, man. He yeah. did. He put a fucking Millennium Falcon right on the hood. No, I'll pretend sure. to. Yeah, that to car's to badass. So. Pour some beer out. Beer out of chops. Chops. You don't pour beer out. That's just a waste. I won't really, but I pretend I would. Is it made out of metal? The, Rest in the, peace, the, chop. Pork chop. Car. No, Great guy. No, not the Mostly, yeah, I think. Yeah, it's well, metal. yeah. I was talking the about real Peter Graves just logged on. I was talking about the Millennium oh, Falcon, shit. actually. The Millennium Falcon. Yeah, it's a die cast. Millennium oh, nice. Falcon. Yes. Just very kind of cold. I'm cosplaying as Peter Graves tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Millennium Falcon. Cosplaying as Peter you're cosplaying, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Rob Bonner cosplayed as me twice in one weekend. This is so you I had somebody dress as me on a Halloween time. That was fun. Uh, somebody, also, we, it was really uh, weird. I myself done so weird, well. Honestly. It was, I mean, it was funny. I was as like, hell, oh, my God. Yeah, so you, you, Peter, like, you Peter Gray, Yeah, this I'm Halloween, sure. I think I'm gonna be you. Except I'm gonna have to get away. I'll be you. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to shave your head, but that's fine. I, 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 old I'll, I'll be just like the, the what do you call it, bald cat? Yeah, Dumb green. There we go. I used to have long hair. Hell yeah, 
Probably my loss there. That's why it's all gone. Is is Wayne Pennington your first non punk rock guest? No, no. I was. I'm not a punk rocker. Am I? I started as a as a metal guy. When I first played, I was a bassist. That's how you were born. When I was a front man. Yeah, just popped out. <laughs> 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 popped out with the same line. You were a front man bassist. Uh, I was like a bassist Sting? and then a front man. Oh, you like Sting? You just call me Sting. Well, front man bassist. Front man bassist. Like Getty Lee. Front man bassist. I can just see I your can eyes. Over I can just see your eyes. That's all I can see too. That that monitor was not there when we were here. Nor was access to the refrigerator. I, that's too many that things. Second part is a lie. He's gonna bring that up. <laughs> 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 I mean, you, you didn't put a refrigerator in your rider. Is your yeah, problem? Right? My yeah. 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 What yeah. happened? What happened was that I Mike. brought like five gallons of fucking hurricanes with me, and I didn't really need access. Jennifer could have negotiated a better rider. <laughs> that sounds like a bad decision all around. It was hurricanes it was, like the forties. What was the last year of hurricane season? I recall. Oh, well, that's a good reason to celebrate. We did. You were here for that. You missed the hurricane. So. Yeah. I think I was recovering from one of my multiple accidents or something. That's, yeah, that is what happened. I, I, remember, I remember commenting that you weren't here for like five months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The show. What kind of accident? Yeah. Oh, I like to get in vehicle wrecks. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like uh, yeah. uh, how good are you? You, you know, need like, yeah, that's why you need a smart car. They have a good safety rating, man. Yeah, they're so small, no one can hit them. They're so small, no one can hit them. No, they just no, they yeah. mosquito, yeah. like trying to hit a mosquito with a. You, the car will be destroyed, but you live. That's how they're designed. They're trying to hit a mosquito with a razor blade. I, I, I got it because of the safety rating. Nobody believes that, but it's true. I had a Hyundai accent. I was trading it in. I can get another Hyundai accent. So I was Googling price for 2013 Hyundai accent. It, and it, the, the first hit that came up when you Google 2013 Hyundai accent was car and driver had given it the lowest crash test rating it had ever given a car in history. And I was like, God, I guess I shouldn't get that. I'm like, well, what's the best sub compactor for crash test? Well, the best one was Mini Cooper, and the second best was a smart car. And I thought, how can a smart car be that good? And then I started researching it. And it's like basically like they took a roll cage at the inside of NASCAR car, oh, yeah. put a three cylinder motorcycle in the back of it, and put four cars in it, and then slap a bunch of plastic shit on the outside to make it look like a car. Yeah. And it gets, you know, 45, 48 miles a gallon. And in the city, it gets that or average or overall. It's really overall. just yeah. fancy redneck ingenuity. It's, but if, like, it, you if you get in an accident, before. they just bounce. You know, they're, <laughs> they're just, so they're just gonna go flying off with all that shit, the plastic door, and everything. All the and red on the car is gonna go. fly. The silver stripe you see, that's the car. That's the car. That's the real car. The, all the rest of the stuff, plastic like a frisbee, is made out of. Like you can just <laughs> bend it. Good luck keying it. You can't key it or nothing. Damn it! It got all. It was parked yeah, close to the house. Me and the house fire is about ten feet away from the house, and the whole front, the hood, the sides, and all the. Melted. Melted. <laughs> I thought for sure they were going to total it out, and they were like, "They're so cheap to repair." They're like, "No, but they're only like eighteen hundred dollars to repair, and we're going to total it out." And like, and what's really weird was it, it, it really has held its value because I'm thinking about trading it in. I usually try to, to trade a car in on the tenth year, and uh, it's supposed to be the tenth year for it. So I've been looking about trading it in, and it's nuts. They go. I mean, I paid eleven thousand dollars for it, yeah. and according to Kelly Blue Book, it goes for about six thousand eight hundred dollars. That's pretty good holding its value for 10 years. Uh, not bad at all. Yeah. So I, I was shocked, honestly. I thought to myself, like, 2000 bucks, you know, tops. Right. And so I have a, I'm I'm never a, needed to buy a new car. So I'm going to take you with me next time. New I have car, new cars. Car. You, you, know, car. Car. you know what? There's this, it has to be uncomfortable. Do you know? I don't know. know that yeah, smart car, can you? Do, do you know the band uh, uh, Blackberry Jam? You know those guys. Yeah. Blackberry Jam. Sol, Solar Solar Hedrick from Blackberry Jam. Mm-hmm. Solar Hedrick. He's a, a, a car right. salesman up here in Kingston. He's got a lot of people. Still? Good deals. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I just, he, he, he'll, 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 my yeah. Passion. If you know, you know, he's getting a lot of local music people good hookups on cars up there. He's hey, wait, up with, yeah. Yeah. You got the mic back away from your face a little bit. You got it's a little too hot. You that was super hot. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, the whole arm. You can probably walk about a foot away from your face. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, there you go. Yeah, all the way. Yeah, that one's really, that one, that one's. The way you're saying it, basically, you get a dent in your car, you can just take the heat gun to it. (laughs) I would try that, but it might, it might. I don't know if it would dent. I don't know if it would dent. I think it would either crack or it would just bounce back on its own. Because it's literally, like, think of that plastic of Frisbee's made of it. That's what it's like. Right. You know, tried to chew on one like That's a dog hilarious. before. Yeah. It didn't work out well. <laughs> I'm sure, like a couple of us could go out there and just lift it up. I mean, I think the whole thing only weighs 1,200 pounds. Wow. Yeah, that weigh not. Motors probably the heaviest thing in it. And it's about as big as two loaves of bread. It's like it's about that big. It's crazy. Three cylinders. How many gallons is this thing with more volume? Eight. I got all the way. Well, Chef can appreciate this because he lived. He's from Ashland, Ohio, and I'm from the next town further away, Worcester, Ohio, another 30 minutes, 20 minutes further. And uh, I can get from my driveway in Brownsburg to my dad's driveway in Worcester, Ohio. I'm one eight gallon tank of gas. Wow. How many hours? About four gallons. Yeah. Yeah. I have a 12 gallons gallon gallon worth of gas. But what can I'm you take in it? Like, what can you carry besides yourself and your passengers? Yeah. Right. Uh, maybe five bags of groceries. Yeah. yeah. You could so, yeah. like a smart car behind it. So yeah. I am. I am. <laughs> they have some four door smart cars in Germany <laughs> now. They have really some that are slightly bigger, but they don't have them here. <laughs> I have a Hyundai Elantra, and, and, Yo, I'm like, and I carried a lot of shit with me to Florida when I went, and I averaged. On that trip, not always, but on that highway trip, 41.8 miles a month. I stopped for uh, the gas prices. I decided you just, I'm going to put 40 bucks in and I don't want to fucking look at it. <laughs> That's all you can do. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm going to put this amount in either way. So why give a shit? <laughs> It's funny how everybody loses their mind over it, though, when it gets like, when the well, price goes up and it's like, so it went up a, it went up a dollar and you've got a ten gallon tank and so you paid an extra ten dollars this week. Right. I mean it's like right. it's not and I mean I'm saying that's not bad and ten dollars is important to some people, but at the same time it's like people are like it's like the egg situation right now. People are like losing their mind over the price of eggs and I'm like yeah. how many meal uh, 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 the one girl was posting about the price. Of She's like, it was five ninety seven for a dozen eggs. And she posted the picture. Said, first off, that's eighteen eggs in that, not a dozen. <laughs> Number one. Number two, it's like so eighteen eggs, two two eggs to a serving. You got Five nine. Where else you get nine seconds. meals for five dollars and ninety seven cents? I mean, you can make nine omelets out of that. Exactly. I'm just like, it's not. I'm not I'm saying really I'm not upset morning. about it. I'm the one that buys the groceries in our house. It annoys me too. But yeah. the people like setting their hair on fire over it, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Don't go to don't go to Burger King anymore. And that it's like this is money. Seriously, I mean, TVs. You, know, you can see like four people Com- on computer one monitors, King, you know, TVs, price. our cell phones. All these things are cheaper groceries. now than they were. So yeah, it's no. an offset. You know, it, it's just. It is what it is. People are going crazy. Buy chickens. Buy chickens. Yeah. Buy chickens. I mean, that's Susan Fleckenstein's got right. that shit figured out with the chickens in her backyard right now. I'm like, I thought to myself, like, you're probably like a Saudi oil baron with the Dr. chickens Nicole, in her backyard, like her friends are like, my landlord yeah, like, hey, owns like three of houses. Hey, I call it the uh, Birch, can you pull your mic back and then point it at your face? He's got a bunch of chickens. Pull it this way? Yeah. So I'm trying to get this sound figured out because everybody's reporting pretty. Pretty bad sound. So they are all. It's, it's, in our you, need, you, need, you need. You need. You need. You need. Your shit sounds bad. How are we you supposed to listen to this? How's this? How's this? How's this? How's this? How's this? How's this? Is this better, Peter Graves? I don't. How? how I mean, I, this is. This is. Too much. Oh. Wait. What's um, going on? Oh. Okay. I didn't. Okay. I didn't know. He could, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, that tightens, uh, this is what happens <laughs> when. Four minutes before the show, you had to rerun the entire soundboard. God. <laughs> yeah. Now I am publicly complaining. Public. Oh, damn. You put this shit public. Oh, it's going to be a beast. Are you going to get canceled? <laughs> <laughs> See if this is better, Chef. No, he, you know what? That was it. You just right. figured it Sweet. out. It was Wayne Birch's uh, camera. His mic was on. The mic was on, yeah, so it was picking up sound from the entire room uh, and reporting it. Wow. Yeah, it's probably <laughs> it probably sounds better now. Hey, Mike, while you're up, so do you mind fixing uh, this Penny is okay now, camera? Peter, I know I'm good. Appreciate camera? that. 
It's uh, it is sideways. I can just sit like this. The rest I got of the it, dude. Sit down, want. Mike. Yeah. The browser has lost connection to your mic. Yep. Perfect. How are you, Peter? Hope your car's doing well. Is that a touchscreen? What? What happened to your car? I heard it what happened up to your on the interstate car? or something? Yeah, it rolled like four times. They hit a semi. Oh shit! Yeah, it was nuts. I'm are you all right? He's, <laughs> he's commenting. I guess he's fine. Damn, dude. Yeah. It was, it was all road rage, really. <laughs> Man, I hope you're joshing me right now because I'm laughing. <laughs> No man, it's like flip like I three times. And like the whole fucking room went silent. I'm like, wait Mike, a will you sit down? I like, is that true? Really bad Please <laughs> sit down, Mike. Yeah, you're laughing about a man that. I mean, I, he is probably fine. He had to change locations because uh, the Hollow Earth lizard dudes are triangulating my location. Oh, his man. location. Not mine. I hate it when that happens. Yeah, really do. So uh, let's hey let's uh, everybody that's uh, just now able to hear and understand what the fuck's going on. Oh, uh, welcome hello. to uh, the uh, 40th edition of Midweek Crisis Podcast. We've got Wayne Pennington oh, yeah. in the house, local musician. W-B. Wayne Birch, local artist. W B. Notable Barfly cartoonist for Nuvo for a long, long time. Polly Punk, a local porn star, and Mike Makey, party crasher. You're a porn star. I didn't know that. Wow. I didn't either. Do you go like <laughs> OnlyFans or? No, apparently there's a sex tape that got leaked. No, no that's... That's... you should monetize, man. Start something while you can. Somebody already has, has, somebody already has on, on yeah, eBay, dude. I believe. I thought I saw one on Marketplace uh, three days ago. I heard it's the laughing stock of the internet, but you know. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Pennington, uh, are you from Indiana? I'm from Virginia. You're from Virginia. Yeah. Uh, and what um, uh, what got you into music? everybody uh, that, uh, uh my great grand and my family played music my great granddad played music my dad's a drummer he plays uh so you know i just kind of started writing songs like 15 or 16 played a lot of metal and stuff played you know played a lot of local shows you guys know the emerson theater yeah never heard of it oh, i fucking loved that place <laughs> i man. i had that shit hole was wait, like wait is oh, that the place man. with the hill yeah, yeah, the hill. yeah. I heard it doesn't stay, have a hill yeah. anymore. Does it not have a hill? Anymore? It's you know, like the the hill in Deer Creek. It's basically like that, but in a fucking theater. That place used cement. to be a porn theater. Is that where you got your start? Yeah, actually, oh. yeah. Yeah, it makes yeah sense. That, that's yeah. yeah, that's where the tape was recorded. And it was all yeah. downhill from there. In the bathroom, if I recall, <laughs> the bathroom <laughs> ever seen. You, I never I looked up to see how tall they were. Man, you got to look down, and make sure you're not stepping in shit. <laughs> 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 um, so uh is that are there any uh um, that place is the cabaret metro of uh indianapolis by the way the emerson right place. on thanks well, mike now it's like a rap theater, but... so more about wayne pennington he is our guest today uh i would like to this uh was brought to you by the, the emerson theater well, yeah brought to you by the emerson theater <laughs> what was your what was your first band's name Wayne. me oh yeah. man it was disturbing the piece because the cops came while we were practicing one time and we <laughs> thought we were badass i like it ddp yeah, time dude yeah yeah exactly it rolls off the tongue that was a good time uh, that was a i think a, a front man to that band i played bass in one called fallout radio are these virginia bands or indiana no bands? these are here oh, okay okay yeah yeah my whole music music career has been here there is not shit to play in virginia starting to book road gigs and things like that and just hitting hard virginia's not dick and i hate it because i want to go through there i want to see like family and stuff but you got to drive like five hours to, to, to move a fucking, like a mile and a half yeah because it's all like fucking mountains oh, and yeah. shit well you know they started they've <laughs> got true. their highway system pretty good through there now yeah it, it's nuts uh when we traveled as a kid from uh i didn't drive or anything my parents did but <laughs> It took been pretty wild. They do. It, it was it would be a good time. It was like hours longer, and they ended up blowing through this mountain and making a big ass tunnel that chopped like two hours off. Nice, which is uh insane. Do you uh do you have any musicians that uh really inspired you outside of your family, of course? Oh uh, yeah, I mean I just I kind of gravitated to the songwriting stuff before I knew the songwriters. Cause I, I just recently kind of fell into the songwriting community and finding like a, 
the storyteller genre and whatnot. And it's weird. I was just talking to Wayne about it. I did a, a Tom Waits tribute show, and it's it's like I got a lot of people asking me if I listen to Waits or telling me that I, I sound like it. And I was like, I've never listened to a Tom Waits song <laughs> in my life. So I, I did a Tom Waits tribute show and went down that rabbit hole. You got the bassy pretty, voice, uh, a little raspy bassy voice. I love his music. He's uh, awesome. He, he's, he's got a little bit of that. I woke up in the morning and gargled yeah, with exactly. some broken glass and some yeah. Jack Daniels. I yeah. had a light bulb when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, for real? Oh yeah, it's I was like in the morning. I'm on my third like, pack of cigarettes. <laughs> I don't know why I would do that, but it was like a nightlight. I think my sister talked me into it. Was so, it one of those old school ones that have a bunch of lead? And no, it was like a nightlight one. Is it fair uh, to say you're the hot. most enlightened person here? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, the lights are on. Was it a forty watt? On. Was it a forty watts bulb? We could maybe blame Mike Minky. Oh what? <laughs> Wasn't that your old band, 40 Watts? Yeah, what was the, what was the reference? He ate a light bulb. I said, oh. was a light bulb a oh, 40, 40 Watts watt bulb? Because then you could blame Mike you, Banky. Well, I didn't Come on, create, Mike. Be I, I didn't create electricity. That's a throw me, that's uh, that is Edison. throw me one of these? Yeah. Fine, gentlemen. You don't want the blood orange? You're going to stick with the hand? Yeah, that I'll, blood I'll, take a, I'll take a blood orange, yeah. yeah. It is badass. That's good. What is your event going on at Center Point tomorrow, Wayne? So it's it's something Peter Graves started. That's, oh, that's the uh, Indian Indianapolis visual artists, and he he co-modded me on it, and uh, or co-admined me, or I whatever. My, my and um, to regular. So I made the first event, which is we're calling it the Drink and Draw Social Club. I think we'll do it, you know, once a month. Um, my guess is it'll probably stay on Thursdays because it seems like that's the big free day for Pete. Yeah, like and, every uh, Thursday or no, no, like probably like one Thursday a month, you know, yeah. like I guess I'll look at this was what the third Thursday. So I'll probably just like third Thursday of next month. would be yeah, my guess. Sense. But uh, uh, plus at it's center, a litter of it right third center Thursday. Point? Makes, is it at litter. center point? This one's at center point. Okay. Okay. Maybe the next one. I th I'm thinking Gugman house for the next one, but we'll see. If, center it's like, point. yeah, that's a switch, just do it at different breweries. Do it at different brewery every yeah, time. And people bring, bring their sketchbooks or, do show and tell talk about what they're working on i used to be in a group called the indie web comics group it was just all cartoonists and we did the same thing we had a drink and draw once a month and it was great and then for whatever reason if they're listening i'll, I'll apologize these guys will probably be annoyed i say this but they like moved into this whole like like let's go do it at a library and teach kids to draw and stuff i'm like i want to drink i don't want right? to yeah. i'm doing this for like camaraderie and beer while we drink and talking and tell lies about girls and whatever you know <laughs> uh, you know whatever stuff guys do and and yeah. and women do or whatever the people that showed up we, we had a great time and then they they kind of started moving into like i don't know what helping society or something and I wasn't, you know, I'm all for that, but I don't want to, sure. I don't want to mix helping society, Fuck helping society. with my society beer and with stupid. my artwork. Jesus you know, Christ. I, let it burn. I, right. I, the Republicans were right. Let me, let Society's me, awful. Let, Shut up. Let me do that separately. <laughs> I don't want to do social outreach. I want to drink and draw. And so I just want to say, drink and drive. I just want to drink and drive. I'm going to write a song about that now. We I can't drive 55. Get burnt. And it's cause, just because that was all cartoonists. The funnest thing like that like we used to do is we would song. do this jam do it, comic. Yeah, it was yeah, really fun. It. And I don't know if we'll do yeah. this with this. This is a cartoonist. I would draw, like, say, the first panel. It would, you know, I would just draw whatever. I would draw Obama cooking a hamburger or something <laughs> in the first panel and then i would give it to him and then he had to continue the comic strip oh, nice. and what really nice. sucked was whoever the last guy was you kind of felt obligated to like wrap it all up somehow right. and make Sorry, it make yeah. sense and so and the people have put in like the guy was cooking a hamburger and then he you know I, obama is handing the hamburger off to somebody and the third person made that the guy that picking the hamburger up was an alien and then <laughs> by the time the last guy's picking up he started thinking like something he can draw and a punchline that made all of that make sense and it was fun it was really fun and sometimes they actually were pretty cool you know and it was like and and you would have stuff like like when we were doing that so long ago, it was Obama was president. And um, I would frequently, when I would do my panel, they would, you know, since I was such a big Obama fan, I was always working, you know, drawing Obama into it. Plus, I was doing a political cartoon back then. So right. I kind of had Obama down to like memory. I could draw him pretty easy. And I think uh, you could do it with your eyes closed. I could do a character of him, probably. With what I think, because it's all. Oh, but eyes closed. It would probably look like Mr. Potato Head. I want to see it. Do you have Obama? A, do you have a pad of paper? He was hard. When you practice, actually, do you ever practice with your eyes closed? You could do it 100. percent I want to see ever. 
I, I, we start a blind series. I think you should start you a new series with, with your eyes closed. I don't know. I, I, we, could something. Try. we could try. It would look like those John Lennon. Like, I, I will say, windows. Obama was hard to do at first because, and and I was, I mean, I campaigned for Obama. I went door to door for Obama. And the heartbreaking Me thing too. was, I bet you the first five or six cartoons I did of Obama and Nuvo, we got emails and stuff from people that the cartoon I was doing was too, like my likeness of them was racist. And <laughs> Whoa. which is just heartbreaking to me. Right. I'm like supporting him. I'm going door to door. I don't think I'm drawing him, I, I but it, it was, it just took what? a while to, because you when you're you doing a character or somebody, you're exaggerating facial features. If you're doing Barbara Streisand, you're making her nose exactly. half as big as her it's head. Right. Caricature. But when you're doing people of a certain race and you're exaggerating the features it's really easy to go over that line right. do they right? do that at disney world do the people who draw caricatures at disney world um, and say oh my god what i'm trying to get at, a racist fucking caricature what I'm trying to get at is, there's this fine <laughs> line there's this? this fine line and it took me oh about my god, ridiculous. about five weeks or six weeks oh. to get that point point. and with him i had to figure out that it was like with with obama it was all about his teeth it was about his ears, you know. Once you got and it, and he kind of had a weird shaped head, too. yeah, yeah. And so by the time you got like his, I'm his, sure he did after you was done drawing it. You, you got, <laughs> by the time you kind of got him down to there, the weird kidney bean shaped head and the ears and a really big smile. Uh, what president has the weirdest shaped head? The weirdest shaped head. Yeah, if you had oh, to draw them all, gee whiz. Abraham Lincoln had a long head. Grover yeah. Cleveland. I mean, I Grover didn't draw Cleveland them all. I, head I was strictly like, the Bush know, Obama Trump era of me doing life. the cartoon. Was those actually three. Trump has the worst head. And I'm Trump just is just say, kind of a square. I'm just going to say kind of a big that square. I've never seen one president's dick. I don't know how any of you have seen them, <laughs> but that is just wild to me. <laughs> <laughs> So you obviously didn't see President that. that fam- There's a famous painting that a, a woman a did of, of President Trump nude with a tiny micro penis. It's a very famous painting. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, and, and I, was was, it, I, I was told that it's even a little larger than. It's part yeah, of the. Yeah, 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 she had to make it seeable. She had to make it seeable so there's something there. But. They have to get a nude photo <laughs> when they're put in office. There's think, actually a museum. I think his in balls Washington are ovaries. Go to and view I think his balls are ovaries. What? Yeah, hundred well, percent, man. Google it. Trump's Press balls. Trump's doc. balls are ovaries. They're inside. We're, we're about thirty it's, minutes it's, in. I, uh, I think it's about time Packers. we do our first line, Mike. If you want to get the cocaine out. Uh, <laughs> I, I I did bring Carey, powdered sugar. Uh, uh, I brought you, powdered you, were sugar. D, you were DJ Thorne in another life when I drew you, right? I see she's she's posting that she liked I drew her. Oh, I like, uh, yeah, who are you talking to? Jeanette Carey. Mm. She's posting. Right. Hello, Jeanette. Hmm. She posting. Yeah, yeah so, I was on an event that when I, I drew her for Barfly, it was because Mel used to do this cool event called Open Turntable Night instead of Open DJ, uh, Open Mic Night. Mm. And and Shimmercore hosted it and people would bring their vinyl and oh, they got yeah. the DJ for half an hour. And oh. I went one night and DJed, and uh, she DJed, and um, Shimmerco would spin Northern Soul. Yeah, yeah. Like it- I tr- my challenge was what I was trying to do was I tried to go. I think I started with the Everly Brothers, and I ended up with something like kind of hardcore, <laughs> and I tried to like make it mesh like all the way through, like yeah. just changing it slightly. So that was what my, I tried company? to go like from one extreme <laughs> to the other. Come on, Minky, keep by the only beats. changing a little, like just the next one just a little bit harder, and they all sort of sort of went. This, each one sort of went with the one before. And the one after, so that it was, it was, it was fun to try to as a challenge. Like, how do you get here through the history What's of your music favorite surface to do cocaine off of? Uh, titties, glass, titties. <laughs> titties <yeah. laughs> Have you done it? No, but it sounds. Yeah, it okay. sounds. It sounds. It sounds like a fucking train wreck. I like. I like the idea of titty, and I like the. I mean, it sounds like a terrible idea. It sounds like you're gonna lose coke. You probably that's will. very possible. Yeah, you probably I can will. See that happening. You probably will. <laughs> The people who actually the people who actually do it are probably the people who can deal you, it, right? I mean, stop, they have. A, can you stop doing that? I'm sorry. <laughs> Over a button. I'm just talking. Mike, Mike I was no just matter what, sure I had it right, Jeanette. <laughs> when Mike Mankey was here the last time, the whole show he fucking fiddled with the goddamn mic, and it's like. See, we <laughs> got we got com- the good mic. This is a much more comfortable seat. If, if you have a if you have a I sure feel sorry mic. for 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 Wayne Pennington right but now because just, that is the most uncomfortable. Just go ahead and spot in the sh- room. show it's everybody fantastic. at home is uh, it? Yeah, what you were doing, Minky, uh, without everybody at talking. Just give them a good good old rattle. 
Give a good old rattle over this. <laughs> right now, you know you want to. You just do it. Just do it. Let's get it out of your system. <laughs> either, either way. Uh, Is that better? <laughs> Can you hear me better now? So, uh, Wayne, I want to pick on you just a little bit. I mean, slow bit. Okay, go for it. So, uh, Wayne, the little known fact, uh, Wayne, uh, he's from Worcester, Ohio. Worcester, Ohio. Yeah. Worcester, Ohio. And Worcester, I'm from I could never say Ashland, Worcester, Ohio. Worcester. 20 Worcester. minutes apart. As I say in yeah. Indiana, Worcester. So, so basically, if you lived in Carmel or Noblesville. It's a, be Carmel and Zionsville. Carmel and Noblesville. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah. Westfield, Westfield, they're that close. Beats Grove to fucking Greenwood. is gotcha. uh, And he worked at the McDonald's, right? Yeah, I was the man, the breakfast manager at the Ashland McDonald's. Yeah. And guess where Before my, I became uh, a real manager. My, my, my parents took me when I was a kid all the time in the morning for breakfast. <laughs> so where did I? We've probably known each other for 30 fucking years. <laughs> but really, really, really cool. Uh, to have another Buckeye in house today. No offense, Virginia. You know what the definition of a Buckeye I is? I don't. What? Not a okay. worthless nut. <laughs> a worthless nut? <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. Nobody so over there you knows you how to fucking drive. Buckeye. So you're you a state of worthless, worthless nuts. Worthless. Oh, this is what I know about nuts. Ohio. Is the whole fucking state stinks. Every time I go through Ohio, it's like, no, man, roll up the windows. It smells like a fucking yeah. sewer over oh, there. Oh, wow. You've been to Why? Louisiana. Well, you know that they... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Holy yeah. fuck. Yeah, that, they did that, have a river go on fire in, uh, in, yeah. in The Ohio. Cuyahoga River the caught, Cuyahoga fire, in the caught yeah. fire in the 70s. It was yeah. that yeah. bad. There's, there's a the great river microbrewery there that. called Burning River. Yeah. In Cleveland, Burning <laughs> River Brewery. Exactly. Named after that fire. You know there's a lot of pollution when the river's on fire. Cleveland gets a bad rap. It ties, dude. It's fucking awesome. I... Cleveland gets a bad rap. I honestly, when I sold my store and my ex-wife wanted to move to a bigger city, Cleveland would have probably been my first choice, except my whole thought was if I'm selling my business and my house and everything for this chick and going to move someplace else, I want to move far enough away that I'm not dealing with like my in-laws, baby daddy, all of this stuff. I'm like moving. And so literally we took a compass out of the oldest kid's book bag and I (laughs) drew a, a circle of four hours. And I needed to be farther away than four hours from Worcester. <laughs> and Indianapolis was four and a half hours. And uh, Just I had been enough. here twice for comic, com- comic book conventions. And I remember hours. my thoughts when I was in Indianapolis was it reminded me I'm a lot of Columbus. It does. But it's, yeah, it's even laid out the same as Columbus with the big circle. Yeah. And then the, the, the two streets bisecting it in a big circle. It's the same way Columbus is laid out. So it makes it easy to navigate. And I thought Indianapolis is a lot like Columbus, Columbus but it's just farther ass. away. And so, yeah, I loved Columbus. And I thought it's just like Columbus, but it's farther away. But it's still close enough. I could drive home and like visit my dad anytime I want. I'm like Indianapolis it is. And so I accepted the offer to sell my comic store on the 23rd of December. And I was living and working here, managing the Wendy's, the Brownsburg Wendy's. On oh, you the managed second the Brownsburg of, Wendy's? And the 2nd of February. For a yeah. year. The one, the one, the one The only the one Walmart. there. Well, yeah, it is the only one there. Yeah, it's, it's the one in, front the, of the, in the parking lot of Kroger, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, the manager that, there in 1998. That place has never done well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it it when we were there. <laughs> <laughs> it, when it I was there. It didn't start with you. I'm not saying that. the 17 stores they owned, it was it, the second busiest one when I was there, well, when I left, when I left, they could not. When, I think it, it started going down a little before COVID, and they couldn't keep people. Oh, yeah. no, they had they, bad management yeah, or something. Yeah, they can't even stay open right no, now. Yeah, they can't yeah. stay open at all. But yeah. and then they ended up I lived moving, in Brownsburg. They ended up moving me to the one over while, in Plainfield. Years, decades. And um, what's really weird was they moved me to the one over in Plainfield, and I managed that until I quit. Went through several other jobs. Years later, my final job, I'm working for Checksmart, and I'm back over in Plainfield working, and I'm working at Checksmart. Is there and, cocaine? And this kid comes in one day. <laughs> This young guy comes in one day to cash his check, episode. and I see the name on the check. His name's Devin Ham. With baby aspirin. Baby I, see, I see this yeah. kid's name on the check, and I said, Devin, didn't I'm you mom. used to work for me at Wendy's? And he's like, yeah. And I said, mom. didn't our Wendy's used to sit right around here before they, before they tore it down? He goes, no. He goes, this was our Wendy's. They made this pl- our Wendy's into this place. So I was working back in the same building when I was a check mark, <laughs> but they had just had made the Wendy's into a, into a check mark, and that's where the Domino's Pizza that over is, there is, too. That is, a perfect, that is a Domino's perfect pizza movie tangent. It's like, so weird. You start one place and end ended up, up right it's like back a movie. there. It's the I same mean, movie. Right. He ended up in the same He's like, don't building. you recognize this shitty tile out here? They didn't even change the tile on the floor. And I was like, I did. That's an interesting just, arc. It was that really weird. Interesting arc. But yeah. So <laughs> that's wild, man. That's, that is wild. Why don't you guys take you a lost shot, me, man? Is there something to shoot? I'll do a shot of beer. Mike, you said you were bringing uh, coke and booze. That's all I know. I, I, well, the rum and coke I left at home. Oh, so. bye, dude. 
Damn it. Go back and you wow. get that Coke. Well, did, I mean, you at least brought the other Coke, right? I, we ain't I've worried never, about soda. I've, I've never bought it. I've never bought anything like that. I said brought. <laughs> no, but but I but I but I but I removed the R. I'm not sure if you <laughs> you don't have to buy it to have it. <laughs> Uh, we I shoot this have, in a I state did, where cocaine is legal, so it's okay. I, <laughs> yeah, like it's coming soon. Believe it or not, I, I, I do. I do. I do believe we need some that old timey doctors up in here. Indiana is going to be the fifty third state to go legal on marijuana. Fifty third state. We're going to have to. We're going to get two more states. Two more states. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm out of post now. <laughs> Good luck with Puerto Rico. Yeah. I don't know. I think Trump might have fucked us to get Puerto Rico now. So. Mm. Puerto Rico wanted to be had, but yeah. Right. I like, say, I say, we just so say, badly, fuck it, go won't. for it all, and just head for Iran. Let's take Iran. Fuck it. <laughs> like, no, let's just take their oil and kill everybody. Well, like, I think the that? procedure Oof. is like for for a territory to be a state, they have to vote three times in a row that they want to be a state, and then we got to approve that we want them mm. to. And all and like two thirds of the state. All we really want is their natural have resources. Have and I personally, I would love to. Have I just don't think, I think we cool. need any more states because we're not doing a great job with the states we have. <laughs> you know, where, if anything, you, maybe dude, we should. Dude, the rich are getting richer every fucking day. This this country's where? prospering like it's never prospered before. Oh, the rich God. are doing so well. What do you mean it's not doing? I don't believe in any of that. It's do you guys know silly. that my so my official goal of 2023 is to be the first human to have sex in our space? I saw that. You, I, someone's had to, man. No one's had sex He's in good. outer space. That was my I mean, I'm rooting for you. You, no, you fucking know go, dude. I did, I did, I did my homework. Apparently, it has to have happened. What According position to, would you do in space? First... Ooh. I like they all be floating. Like, well, it has, it, it has to be a spooning like, move. If I'm going on a mission, it has to be a spooning move. If I'm going on a mission to space, it's going to have to be missionary, right? It has to. It has to be a spooning move. One person move. talking at a time, please. <laughs> like, <right>. Well, <laughs> the interesting <laughs> thing about it is, is it has to be a you know, in space, when you say fire a fire, if you're in float and doing a spacewalk and you do a fire extinguisher, you move away from yeah, it at the exactly. same weight that this goes away so, so if you ejaculate in space you're going to move backwards at the same rate that your ejaculate <laughs> nice. goes out of you this way you know so what if the, you a whole new meaning to rocket man this way, right you're going to also go hey, wait, 18 inches wait, this wait, way. wait 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 look up the speed of oh, ejaculate fuck my look, up life. The, look up the average speed of ejaculate there is some loads out like oh wow two this is a known fact that is look upable by somebody on google the speed of ejaculate i want to know how no, fast you're gonna no, be like it is blowing definitely back. from person to person that is not there, there's like an aver- something you can measure there's an average speed i bet you there's can somebody average, that could hit statistics. that fucking garage door all right hey no guys <laughs> You the average it. speed of ejaculate is forty five point zero six kilometers per hour. Jesus Christ! I'm, I'm at least yeah, three times that. Space. Three times <laughs> faster. Yeah. Than it's it's like, like we're not talking about volume. Here. We're it's talking about across speed. the room. Speed of flight. So we're talking real about quick, speed of flight. We need, we need to get. Uh, hey Carol, Carol Burst is joining. Speed of, speed of oh flight. Hey oh Carol. Carol, we're talking Good about timing. fucking in space and the velocity speed of cum flying out of you. And here comes my wife. <laughs> See, like a squirter in space. Is everything. <laughs> space ejaculate. Space uh, squirters, man. Space ejaculation. Space. 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 Apparently, space though, according to science, rate it's almost impossible. Mike, give me one second. Sorry. It's all right. We're gonna get him his own podcast. You know, know. <laughs> it's going I'm down. Going, I'm going. The home. Mike Mankey. I've had enough. No, okay. we're gonna have Jennifer come and pick you up, and then you can stay in the car while she hangs out with us. <laughs> You'll have a better time. You'll have a better time. I'm just fucking right. Yeah, Jennifer is awesome, though. She is awesome. Yeah, she is great. Hey, uh, where were we? Oh yeah, we were talking space, about music. Space and an hour ago. Space and ejaculation, I think, is where well, we left Jeanette, off. Yeah, space. Jeanette and... just gave us the perfect band name for uh, music. Space so. ejaculation. Yeah. Uh, space. Space. Eja- space ejaculation. Space, space ejaculation. ejaculation. Space. Uh, you know that's not gonna go well, <laughs> sir. Space and dude, everybody's just gonna say face ejaculation. <laughs> you know it. You, you know just it. Ride the face ejaculation. You should just take the. All right, e let's, out hey, let's get back. Let's get back to the key questions. Pennington, have you ever had sex in space? 
No. And do you have a goal in well, 2023 to we, do so? Do we not live in space? My 2023 goal is to get back into the Boy Scouts. Back into the Boy Scouts. Well, they don't call that anymore. It's Scouts, you piece of shit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I want to get I'm back. Just kidding. I'd like to get back into being a Roman Catholic <laughs> priest. That. It's the Boy I'm Scouts. A, I'd like to get I, back yeah, I literally I, I wrote a song about uh, a South Park episode, and there's Girl Scouts in the show. So I was like, Girl Scouts. I'm not going to go Scouts. <laughs> Whatever. You just, know, ironically, is it, ironically, here's a, I, I have a question I'm for sorry. you. Is it, is it Cleveland Indians or Cleveland Guardians? I guess it's the Guardians now. It's baby. the Guardians, yeah. They the change the name. The, oh, yeah. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. It's one of those things. Or offensive. Yahweh or whatever you want. I always thought that instead of changing the names on these sports Jehovah. teams, and we still they have should the just Vegas change the context. Hits. Like on Redskins, yeah. make it like a fighting Redskin potato. Sure. Or make it like a fighting, like, <laughs> uh communist punk chick that looks like tank girl that was like a red skin that is head. not racist by the way that was not racist it wouldn't be and so that's what i'm saying you change the context then it would not be racist you know the potato is not racist but, the, but the, the, the 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 chinese punk girl no i didn't that say racist. chinese i said communist oh well that's the, i'll tell you okay, right so, now sorry. so the, she could be russian the, she could be cuban. she could be american she could be cuban. She could be cuban. there's probably a communist punk chick at the next punk rock night all right. <laughs> the most racist oh. vegetable in this country is pizza. By the way, just Why so you guys know. Well, technically, according Ketchup. according to uh, uh, what was it? There is a there is a whole bill on it, and basically, they had to make pizza a vegetable to get it on like school menus. school menus. Yeah, because it has it's full of tomatoes. And it's totally racist because it's yeah. actually an Italian food. So. Um, when well, the, the thing just that, it's probably this probably comes out of the same thing was when Ooh. when Reagan was president, they reclassified Ooh. ketchup as a vegetable so that it would qualify. Yeah, I remember ketchup as a vegetable. Isn't ketchup. Is vegetable. Ketchup. Isn't vegetable. The school could say offer a hot dog with ketchup and say they gave kids vegetables. Exactly. That was the idea. That was the idea. That was the idea uh, that, I think that, that, that looks I think we should explore the idea of catchable though. I think that was that was a new catchable. You just coined it. He he could see it. Hello, He's got a monitor right in front of him. <laughs> Hello, William. Uh, so one time, Shep, one, Shep, one time when Schlosser wanted me to do a poster for one of his shows, it was going to be like a double birthday show for him and his ex, if I remember right. And he did not like my idea, which I had drawn both of them as giant hot dogs, and I wanted to call. <laughs> I wanted to call the show Schlo- Schlossage Fest. <laughs> and he said, "No, Bro, do you still have that? <laughs> oh, did yeah. you make what? it? <laughs> I want it. I will, wow. dude. I will. That I will word. print it. I, that I, is I, worth some more. I'm going to hang it in our studio for a birthday. I'm going to hang it in our studio. It will be on every show. It will be on every show. If you let me have that, Schlossage Fest. That's Schlossage Fest. That's awesome. Do you have it digitally or do you?" You have like an original. I have it digitally. I can just send it to you. Yes, <laughs> he still has I'll the frame that shit. Yeah. It's like <laughs> if I remember right, BB Swanson just looking non impressed, and Will Prince. is going like, oh, yeah. like, yeah. like throwing horns and screaming. Yeah, <laughs> oh, pretty man. funny. It's uh, <laughs> like two big kill bosses. <laughs> 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 At the bottom, it's gonna say "hot digging it down." I just thought it would be funny. But... Schlossages, yeah. schlossages, yeah. schlossages. All right, so Wayne, what what's this band that you're playing in now? Uh, we're called the Poor Valley. You can find it on Spotify, YouTube, all that good stuff. Anywhere you listen to music, under the Poor Valley, uh, we're like a folk singer songwriter meets psychedelic rock. Pretty cool. I got a uh, Tyler Shuttler on lead guitar, uh, Larry Gill playing bass with me, and uh, Nick Levi on the drums. He actually plays a suitcase. Huh. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. All about it, man. It's Does he leave early? Empty or full? Does he leave early? He's got a mic hanging in it. Oh, oh, even That's better. I guess. Yeah. Both. Basically, kind of yeah, empty, suitcase but... half. Full I do hang in suitcases. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, man, that's a good time. We got a lot of shows coming up in 2023. You can go to WaynePenningtonMusic.com to find dates. Uh, we're playing Radio Radio again. We're playing Dukes again. All the all the favorite spots from last year. So uh, Dukes, that's like a like a honky tonk. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. your best out of town spot? Uh, I really like the Wonder Bar in Covington. It's Covington. The first one that comes to mind. Covington, man. Covington's Kentucky? fantastic. Yeah. yeah, it's a killer place right over the river. Uh, used to be known as in the 1940s as the wickedest city in America. Did you know that? I did not know. That. Really? It used to be nothing but, pro- basically nothing but whorehouses 
and strip bars it was like the whole town yeah. was just, just like, like australia bars and all this about. stuff and, and like cincinnati was like super clean and puritanical and so everybody German. everything was driven across the river and it was just like a whole that town was pretty much formed around the idea of if you want to get out of cincinnati and go That's, raise hell then you go to covington so covington was and, like the red light district across the river exactly yeah, yeah. i, 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 I figured you were saying like wicked stuff. like the broadway show like they had like no, like i thought witches lots like 100 percent. so is covington yeah, that, sort of cincinnati's like uh i don't know that it is anymore it's like brother. the 1940s that it had gay this brother? reputation, yeah, it's reputation gay but brother. literally like <laughs> like at one point There's a lot of venues though I mean, at one point they were talking about like the president sending like the army there to clean up the town like it was so crazy like off the hook <laughs> wow yeah it was be and that, I, I believe that's where the the name the wickedest city in america came from like i think that was i think he threatened to do that and i what think the governor of new orleans is new orleans you know, not not more up. wicked don't hurricane don't, don't hurricanes hit I it for how then, wicked no. it is every time i mean that's I because god hates the wicked and he hits, i get the feeling it was kind of like there. a new orleans Isn't type like atmosphere back go then. there I don't know, bro. Yeah, He's just sewed up. <laughs> <laughs> if you um he just remember said God hates remember the movie. Movie. Paddington and I looked at each other like well, what is he saying? Remember the movie uh, we're, talking we're talking about so weather. We're talking about weather. I love Louisiana. No like, to them. But Which the biblical really, the biblical people she, talk like that. Just, just, the biblical people talk like like the people who are like Bible thumpers talk like that is the sin. It is the, the, like, I don't the, the, think Arkansas or not Arkansas, Louisiana is Arkansas ever is not mentioned. A real state. That, well, neither do I. I Has anybody I ever met somebody year. from Arkansas? Anybody? Arkansas? It shouldn't be a real. Have state. you been to Arkansas? I, have, I think yeah, we, we should give up Arkansas. Like five years ago, man. I'm gonna need you to write this down. Little Rock, I need so sad. Little Rock is actually kind of a cool little town. Arkansas is real. Arkansas is real. Do you know how they came it's up with the name Arkansas? Arkansas. 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 That's your Kansas. Is Arkansas. Yeah, that's your yeah. Kansas. That's I ours. I played a show. Uh, they are yes, ours. Selena, Kansas. <laughs> Selena, Kansas. Selena, Kansas. And I know it's Selena because it looks like Selena. And someone on the way to the gas station was, I was like, hey, can I get to Selena, Kansas from here? He's like, I don't know where that is. <laughs> I looked it up and I was like, here, this place. And he said, that's. Salina, or, uh, <laughs> Salina. Salina. And I was like, like you didn't Salina, fucking dude. know what I meant. And I told that story on stage that night. <laughs> and someone from the back of the room went, it's Salina. <laughs> and you could hear that he never hugged his children. It was a great, it was a great <laughs> moment. It was, uh, I was getting that early humiliation out on stage. No. That was fun. I, uh, I can't tell you how many times I've heard to this, <sighs> this town referred to as Lapple. Or lapel <laughs> Versailles Versailles. I'll just say that. Lape I mean it's lapel. Wooster. Right? Lapel, but I get yeah. Lapel from yeah. Wooster, yeah. Ohio. Yeah. Or, or, they don't know or, how to read. That's like a fucking fourth Versailles? grade dropout. I swear to God. Yeah. I'm not fucking around. Sounded Lapel. Sounded out. Lapel. <laughs> lapel. <laughs> or uh how you lock with La lapel. Lapel. Lafayette. Lapel. Lafayette. Yeah. That person has holes in their brain. Lafayette. I think where's Lafayette? <laughs> well, you know, it's 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 always somebody called like it's AT T or it's fucking uh, you know, one eight hundred type. You know, people that that's what they do. They just set out a fucking phone all day and they just call people. I that's, those are the people I say. Man, this echo is driving that. Are you talking about customer service? Where, where we yeah, yeah, pretty much. Pretty customer much. service representatives. People, yeah, not anybody from What's around here. I don't know. I don't know. From India. I'm over it. <laughs> I get up. <laughs> Might be that. Fun. Yeah, Cust it probably customer is. service representatives from I'm India. Sure, it is. But uh, and so, no, please, is, is Wayne, do you, do you have a uh, sorry, Wayne Pennington? Do you have a favorite show know. you've ever played? Oh, any man. band ever? I really like Radio Radio a lot. Uh, a it's a place. place in Fountain Square. Uh, not, not venue, I got my but favorite, like, 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 it's it's the bar where show, people, where like bands sound the best. Out. A one show that you've Jeff ever played. knows what he's doing when it comes to sound. Man, I sure. I love. Uh, we played a sold out room at Duke's, the full band open for nice. Chicago Farmer. Oh yeah. That was killer. Yeah. Uh how how, how many people can pack that place? I'll be honest, I've never been to it's Duke's. It's like four fifty. It's a honky tonk. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a good cool size. I've seen pictures. Yeah, give a lot take, of people. Yeah. That's good. Uh, it's it's a cool spot, man. Yeah, you guys should come out. We're there. Let me tell you a date real quick while we're while fourteen people. Y'all, Will Schlosser, I should see you at this show. Where is? Is it on a Saturday? 
Uh, you know, it might be. <laughs> I think we're booked there a couple times this year. I'm going to be on Saturdays. tour uh, with a dude named uh, Jacob Real, and he's super country. He's going to be killer. But we are at Duke's March. Where are we at? You know, I don't know. Oh, yeah, there we go. It's May 19th. We're at Duke's. May 19th. Two days after my son's birthday. Nice. Yeah. You should bring them. I will. Uh, what day of the week is it? It's a Saturday. It's a will not. No, that's a. You got to bring a couple people. You got to order it's a whole Friday, chicken. Yeah. Okay. And then the a sprouts playing a and some mac and cheese. And they and they only have about like I think yeah. that's all that's on their half menu. A loaf, they don't have much. I was doing half, lo- half, half a loaf of head, bread to toasted out if it was a Friday or Saturday. Half a loaf of bread toasted. <laughs> no they, butter. They only do a no couple butter. things, but the three or four items on their menu. I've heard their chicken is excellent. It is. It's great. So yeah, it's a, it's I don't even like Brussels sprouts. There, Brussels sprouts are great too. You can if you use bacon. They put yeah make, about a pound of bacon yeah, in them that's and the like only way to cook Brussels them in the sprout. grease or something, and they're just like really good. That's the way to do them. We recorded a live album at Duke's. Oh that's, really? That's cool. It's called Hippie Tonk. It'll be coming out April first. We're releasing that at Radio Radio on April Fool's Day. So, hmm. Yeah, April Fools. Be a good time. Yeah, it sounds like they had waffles, waffles, Carol. Yeah. So who's who's now uh, I'm wondering is what's waffles. what's the lineup? What's real? the lineup? Yeah. Is this happening? Yeah. yeah we'll so who see. you got? Who you got opening up? I don't know, man. I don't think that far ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna try and get the Punk and Holler Boys. Oh, you guys know who they are? Oh yeah, yeah. I do. That's a good yeah. choice. I was just at I love uh, those guys. the side door last night. Yeah. Again. Oh, they reopened. They had a pipe bust. Yeah. The whole storm. Did. It's open again though. Uh, yeah, they do an open mic there on Tuesdays. It's a cool little spot. Wayne, uh, when, when did you start doing art? I'm sorry, Wayne Birch. I mean, I've <laughs> always WB. drawn, WB. you know, just like as a kid copying friggin' Spider-Man out of a comic book or whatever. So I've always drawn ever since I was a little kid. I mean, I don't have any professional training, you know, just high school and self-taught, but it's always been my thing. I think, I don't know. I like the, God, that guy's going to piss me you off. You do have, you have a little delay on you. Oh, it's driving it's nuts. kind of cool, actually. It's like the old days. It's man. like fucking Psychrock. He's in a Psychrock band over there. Somebody's got a hippie. He's in a Psychrock band. Yeah. He's in a Hello. Hello. I don't think I can hear it. It's just us. Yeah, it's just us. Uh, in your head talking man. about uh <laughs> talking about art yeah point. talking about art uh damn i had a great question and uh, then the echo <laughs> son of a bitch hello kill that brain cell hello. Hello. it's gone hello all right all right mike go home Just- <laughs> <laughs> they're not hearing an echo on the stream cool. says bronson swanson need Johnson. a sign that says mike so over there yeah no no echoes <laughs> So, yeah, where were we? Uh, you asked me when I started art, and I said I was just self-taught in high school. And Oh, um, yeah, I was going to say, because you said professionally trained, and, then, like, I have a, that word, professional. Professionalism, in my opinion, isn't about how you look. It's not about what you do. It's about how much you do it and how much time you put into it. So, uh, you know, if you put you, your energy. My your definition is that I get paid to do it. <laughs> Yeah. You're paid to do it as professional. That's definitely part of it. That, 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 that is definitely a fucking part of it. That's my, my, then you're a professional. Right. But so, I, I think that line. I mean, I thought I was going to go become an artist for, you know, Marvel or DC or something. That was like my goal in high school. And and I, I you could take all the rejection things that I got from different um, going to comic conventions and showing my art off um, and put them together and make a graphic novel just out of my rejection slips. I had so many. It was ridiculous. But you know, it just wasn't wasn't meant to be, you know. So, you know, maybe I should have went to art school, and maybe I could have knocked on that door. Well, I'll tell no, you, man, you made a, a ass, huge man. difference for a lot of musicians and other artists in this town in this market. So, thank you for everything that you've done, man. Right. Well, thanks. Yeah. Hell yeah, I a lot. He's done a lot. Yeah, you uh, you did a bar fly for me, and I, I you did. never tell people when you do it. It's just like I got called, and they were like, "Have you seen bar fly?" I was like, no. <laughs> That's usually the best way to do it. Yeah, dude. Happened to me once, too. Because a lot of times I take all those pictures, and then it's like, you know, you just don't know. You know, I I would try to tie it in with, like, so-and-so has a show coming up this week. So, you know, I would, would... would try to make it make sense if they had something the coming up that I could plug. Yeah, yeah, if I had, yeah. If I had 
pictures of you and you just played, you know, I, I you know, I might have waited five weeks to do the strip because I might have saw that, you know, you had a show coming up at wherever, you yeah. know, someplace else. So yeah. so then it made it worth, you know, plugging it or whatever. Yeah, the strip so. was always a plug too. It was, it was a little bit about the the people in the band or one person in the band, but then always tied to an event generally, or I tried they have to. a new CD coming yeah. out. I tried to, whatever. if I could, to make right. it timely. Yeah. yeah. But mostly I tried to, my theory on it was like, just what I would tell somebody about that band. If I ran into them <coughs> at a bar, what I would, if someone's like, you just saw Wayne Pennington and, and the proud Valley, what are those guys like? And then I would the proud say, Valley. You son of a bitch. poor Valley. <laughs> just poor Valley. I got their name right. Sorry. Proud mother. Poor and proud. Three beers. Poor and proud. Three beers. Proud. Three beers. Poor and proud. You okay. poor and proud. You okay. poor and proud. Poor and proud. Poor and proud sounds like some fucking. <laughs> that is your next, the that is your next single. Adventure. That is your next single. Poor and proud. Poor and proud. The Valley of the Poor and the Proud. That sounds. Stupid. When you have to change the name, <laughs> when, you have to change, when you have to change the name like Elvis Costello from the Imposters, the Attractions. Now you got your next name. Oh, when, you, when you have the new uh, band lineup, no. yeah. Be. In the Barfly, you said, "Man, this guy's pretty good, but fuck, he needs a band." Oh, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, said yeah. That. Okay, I don't remember and, that. Uh, now we got a band. You got to come out and see us, man. Come out and see us at Radio Radio. That's cool. always fun. Do some. I saw you when is that show again? The Radio uh, we're Radio? a full. We're a four piece there. The three piece was cool, but the four piece has uh, drums and electric guitar. And so, what's the Radio Radio date? Uh, it's April first. April. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting that in now. It's penciled in for Tufty because he's still he's still away. But uh, actually, he just got back like three days ago. Yeah, so Tufty. <laughs> should call him right now on the air and be like you can't say no you're on you're on Midnight yeah Crisis, i'll give him a call if you to. um yeah just uh let me know it's not hard to do i can find it <laughs> blue teeth that <laughs> motherfucker right up in here <laughs> no problem yeah i mean he's, i hear he's, he, i hear he's become a hologram you can invite the hologram jack cole is on oh it. yeah yeah jack yeah my twin brother stopped and said barfly I, I i'm sure he sounded just barfly just like that what's up jack Twin brother, he's actually going to be here. What's the day? 18th? Yeah, so he will be here next Wednesday. Oh, wow. Your twin. My twin brother will be here. identical. Uh, no, uh, say if they're already fraternal, is that, is that <laughs> in, 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 yeah, twin sister, fraternal. Do you have the spot Not in your eye? The twin spot? I don't know. Do I? A lot of what people, I don't that? know. A lot of people or the twins, like they'll have like a speckle in the white of their eye. It's pretty gnarly for real. Yeah, it's cool. They both have it. Yeah. Sorry, I had to fucking. If you're ever looking all... deep into yeah, your twin you brother's a, eyes, do you have a sparkle in your eyes. <laughs> yeah. uh, you have a white sparkle in your eyes. Some neat things about Jack and I. So we were born on Father's Day. Um, uh, that would have been uh, ejaculation. Sunday, uh, June 19th, 1983. We were Gemini's. And 95% of our like uh, genetic build is opposite. And then we also have quite a bit not in common so <laughs> uh music is, again? music just runs through our blood but we're true gemini's what we're, what was the date your birthday june uh sunday june 19th 19, oh, 1997 okay. <laughs> june, june 11 25 motherfuckers i don't know why i always i didn't know you guys were twins i always thought he was the older brother i don't know nah, bro, we're that. twins man I've been i guess just because i like we, met him first so we, i just thought he was older and i met we, you second so you must he's definitely younger. more mature and you know, yeah 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 sure he, <laughs> Fuck off! I've been told that I'm <laughs> no. So true story. We uh, we share a birthday, not the the year, but we share a birthday with yep. another nouveau uh, old schooler, um, uh, Jeff Napier. Yeah. Oh really? He that's his birthday too. June nineteenth. Yeah. yeah. June eleventh. Birthday June was 11. not only a twin, but another Ten sister years before and you, a though. cousin. It's weird. Wait, what? The that's, same day? Yeah, the same day. It was, yeah, growing up, we all had... Like, Seems like an excuse for a stuff. birthday show. That's, you're going to be 45. Yeah. You're going to be 46. What day, what day is that? What's that's, your birthday? Uh, that's January 25th. January 25th. Yeah, it's coming up. What's the 25th? Jack, Jeff, yeah. and John. The Jack, Jeff, Triple and John. The, the JJJ that, birthday. That would birthday. make you a... Oh, really? That's a the melody. Melody. Aquarius? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The dawning of... If you believe in Four bands. A little bit. Mine's had something going on DJ Jack Cola spinning in between. it's all a simulation. My twin brother always has to say it. I was born two minutes before John. So he is older. 
older and wiser <laughs> older definitely and wiser. definitely more mature well is he a real uh, person he looks i believe that i believe that he's yeah, probably more he's real. I, I swear to god i've dealt with him my whole <laughs> life but the question is the question is does he have a podcast he wrote i, I don't think better. i don't think so does he has he ever been in a band no he has his shit together he does if i know he <laughs> does i'm well aware <laughs> He he booked, I've, I've, I've known he him booked Lizzo when she him. cost like eight bucks, and then by the time she came here, she was like worth eight million. So <laughs> he deserves that's, genius that's credit for that. Brilliant move. Are we still talking about my twin brother? Yeah. Can we wait till next week? Okay. Oh, <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'm I want it to be about me, damn it. We're hitting we're hitting a, we're next hitting, week. I'm we're, not gonna show it to the podcast. My car is gonna break down. <laughs> it's gonna be Polly and Peter dealing with my twin brother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, you better bring oh, Ben, wow. motherfucker. Wow. You, you better bring Ben. That would be so dope if you brought Ben with you. But, you know, if you can. You Do know. you want me to slash your tires at like 3.30 in the afternoon next Wednesday? No. Then you no. then you'd have a real excuse. Who can afford new tires? Some real but then you'd, have, then you'd have a real excuse. Did you just schedule. Yeah. Well, he, he's him? talking like he doesn't want to be here, so I'm like, give, trying to give him. Excuse. Who has that tire money? To just Don't throw shoot around? him. What if I just What if I just release the air up and you can just load. pump it back in? About four fifty. Like no hole. Next Come over here, Mike. No hole. <laughs> Come over here. I just I just no. <laughs> I don't want to put. I'm not going to put sugar in his gas tank. I mean. Oh my God! I'm just trying to help, Mike. This is all recorded. <laughs> if any of this shit goes down. I'm showing this shit to the cops, man. <laughs> what Dude, I know who did it. What county are we in? Have you done that? To uh, your what county is this? What county are we in? Uh, this is uh, Madison hell. County. Madison County. <laughs> yeah. So uh, UFO. Uh, Hello, Madison County, county of the Police. world. Is it? I've never, yeah, you didn't know this that? is not no, something that's them. actually so, uh, going to happen. But the the most infamous UFO film ever made up until Alien. Uh, <laughs> that's a bad joke. Uh, no, so uh, they based a, a movie. Steven Spielberg, to be do, precise, do, do, precise. Do, do, uh, he uh, based a, a film called uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. It was based out of Muncie, Indiana. Yeah. So I've always referred. To this as UFO County of the World. I did not remember that. Sure. That it was yeah, Muncie. yeah, it's Muncie, Indiana. Yeah. I didn't remember that. It's about, That's where Richard Dreyfus lived. It's about it's where, like where the abducted from Muncie, where the whole train scene train. happened. Yeah, yeah, or, uh, or not tra- rail- railroad track. Uh, it's about twelve minutes up the road from here. Wow. So yeah. Go. Sure. Well, yeah, quote unquote, that, it was Muncie, it was probably yeah. shot in Canada because it's a lot cheaper to shoot there. <laughs> but uh, no, like in the film, it's you know whatever. Yeah, it's Muncie. that way. Terry Gar, Terry Gar with a monster. And what do you guys think Bigfoot is? Uh, everywhere. What do I think he is, or where do I think? Where? I I, guess what, I buy a Bigfoot every day. I mean, at everywhere. Speedway. <laughs> what? Is that, what sweet. is a Bigfoot? The convenience oh, we store can guess of Speedway. The <laughs> they have Bigfoot Sasquatch. Right? Or Bigfoot the drinks. The drinks called Bigfoot, right? Yeah, they could have went honey bun. I thought honey, honey bun, bun or like gas station hot dog. I do like, know that I do know that sasquatches are uh, especially attracted me, to honey buns, so do not carry them when you're in the forests. I I, I tend to <laughs> all all that stuff. I tend, good I, to know. I have a zillion books about you know they cryptids honey bun, and UFOs sasquatch. and all that crazy stuff, but I always get to the end of it and I'm like, yeah, it's all probably bullshit. I just can't. It's pronounced bullshit. We'd be. We'd be <laughs> We'd be finding uh, some bones by now, yeah, you know. We'd yeah. be finding some something more. Australopithecus, Bigfooticus, Australopithecus, Bigfooticus, and then he would like, be finding off something somewhere else. That's yeah, why yeah. yeah. Him, you know? So I just, I, 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 now, I, that's a real I love reading the, about all this stuff, maybe and then the cave I, I always conclude that maybe I think it's probably like, like I hundred percent think like, well, you're going to get to the alien question pretty soon, right? But like, I oh, we, we got at least an hour. All right, it's illegal in uh, Washington. Well, I mean, we could skip. Foot. We could skip the other oh, two really? subjects yeah. and go I right to that. Yeah. Whatever you want to back so around. Around. the tags like do do here? <laughs> Mike, <laughs> hey Mike, tag. Mike, if you don't talk uh, into the mic, they people did, can't they, hear you, bro. They made it illegal to. Uh, own bigfoot hunting equipment there in the <laughs> they, they make bigfoot hunting equipment <laughs> yeah. really people were if you go to amazon uh, and download like bigfoot the hunting park. kit I, I do love the bigfoot the comic big, strip by robert crumb the amazon fantastic. bigfoot, bigfoot versus kit. white man look that up <laughs> available in pacific northwest only so uh speaking of drugs um <laughs> Huntington, do you have a, your, a favorite trip story or hallucinogenic story you'd like to share with the world or, one, or, man. or you can play the one two three follow 
No, it's my <laughs> voice. Uh, it's gone. I've only done drugs legally. Okay, cool. <laughs> like Tylenol. Under supervision of <laughs> <doctors>. <laughs> Uh, no, Dexter man, I forgot how to sit down on mushrooms one time. Dexter that was Mathorfan. fun. You uh, did what on mushrooms? I forgot how to sit down. <laughs> no shit? Yeah, I sat, like, hovered above. I was trying to sit on, like, a crate that I had, and I just had my hands on my knees, and I sat above it. And I was like, I don't I don't know the rest of this process. <laughs> and uh, that that was a good one. I I was tripping pretty hard at Blackie Fest. That's a that's a little festival. Not racist, by the way. North Not racist. There. No, shut up. It's a giant cow. Uh, is Blackie? Uh, bring race into I this. said not racist. Uh, okay, so where is where is Blackie? The it's festival? up north. It's in Angola, Indiana, right on the Michigan line. Uh, I met Jesse Ray from Jesse Ray and the Carolina Catfish Killer Duo out of uh michigan check them out uh i for i just couldn't speak he met me and he came up and he sat down next to me and he talked to me for a few minutes and i just didn't say anything <laughs> i couldn't figure out how to socially <laughs> know you know what i mean and uh, he met me the next day and i was like man i'm sorry i just couldn't even comprehend speech at that moment <laughs> which was fun <laughs> and he was like no he gave me some too I get it <laughs> uh, a friend of mine was eating grass like six feet away he's like my stomach hurts and he, swear, he denies it up and down i wasn't eating fucking grass I, like I, a he, cat. Was. Oh, he was just yeah like a, like a dog trying to yeah. settle his stomach yeah. or what, what would chairs look like That's if our legs shit. bent the other direction <laughs> We probably look like birds, right? <laughs> it would just be backwards chairs, like we oh, would said, lean would on the chairs. That would just be it's stools, just I think. No, right? no. So you wouldn't, I don't know. Have you ever sat on the toilet backwards? No. Uh, no. Well, no. yeah, actually, I have. I've That's installed a toilet and yeah. tightened down so, the belts yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That makes it, sense. Have you ever thought about the fact that you know, like all the mammals on this planet, all the, if they're standing like we are, they're their knees go their legs go the other direction you know we're the only mammals with like legs like ours that stand bipedal bipedal yeah whatever thanks you're what <laughs> but we, is that, we walk on is two that feet. rather interesting unlike well, and monkeys or gorillas no look at the no well, the way that they walk, they don't walk straight up. They're hunched. I said we're bipedal. They, they, and they, they use walk. their we are the only bipedals. Humans they, are the only well, bipedals. Well, they got hands on their feet. That's their problem. Well, I identify yeah, that's, as that's, a turtle. We're the only, a non, only ones. A non opposable thumb is not helpful. Every living thing on this it's planet. Hard we're to the open only jars. ones. Do you think that that safety on a gun around the trigger is so monkeys can't? <laughs> is it what? <laughs> Fit their fingers in gun. <laughs> Oh man, it's a, <laughs> cocaine's a hell of a drug guy. Mike Makey. I wouldn't know. So it is dry. It is Mike's fault. I agree. Jeez, Mike. He's like, what are we drinking tonight? I didn't even respond. <laughs> like, whatever you bring, bro. You're also one of the only people that have ever texted me and asked me for the address of where I was at and knew where I was at, <laughs> by the way. I just want to say direct, that like, was... I literally sent him a text and a, like a direct message, like that was, that was right, right, like maybe three minutes before he texts you. I'm like, just look at your message. <laughs> How many people? Are, I was he's got like 25 unread messages Noble or something. World, you know? you, I, we, we need to know. Do you have like a text <sighs> message generator? Or something that you use. I'm about to go help him find his vape. <laughs> I'm like, he sets up like emails to send out at certain times. He sets up his texts to go sick. out at like 6:42. What'd you lose, man? You're Pick, fainting I, over there. Yeah. Whoever picks him, I have, no, I have looks nothing like to do with my life. I'm doing my fact checking duties tonight. What'd you fact check? Pixie Lish, whoever she is. is Are you raising Pixie your Lish? hand? Kangaroos, monkeys, and apes. Oh, oh shut family. up. Jesus. No, shut up. Look at the, the, the no. I'm talking about hand? back and legs, like straight up. I wish we'd. You, you guys think we should like, you know, the best, legs legs just the best barbecue like is back legs. Have you ever had back leg barbecue? Badass. I've had frog legs. Frog legs. I was talking about back legs. Name the six mics. <laughs> There's six mics. Samson, Mankey, who else? <laughs> Pixie, do <laughs> some more. Look into that. Michael, some more sure. before, Michael before you say it for sure, because I'm pretty Michael sure Angelo. the way that humans are built are not like any other mammal. But 
Because now I'm curious. They are because we walk on two legs. We're the only animal that walks on two legs. Only mammal that walks like on two our, legs. The every, way... every, every other mammal walks on four, even the, even the apes. Check it. I'm telling you, Pixie, check it. Uh, I'm not, it's, I'm, I'm a pretty... biologist, dude. Oh, okay. He's a biologist. Oh, yeah. Never mind, Pixie. Don't believe we have him. A car- Mike a who took a zoologist. Who, who else took a zoology class? I thought you were a scientist. I am. A sci- He's just bragging all over the place. Today. I, have I, a a zi- I have a I zoology it. degree. I, I made $60. I do not, I do so not have a I don't have any cocaine. Degree. <laughs> I do not have a zoology degree. It was, it was actually Michael. No, no. He said he never bought any. It's true. So everyone's just going and giving you cocaine. <laughs> you, that is true. You never did deny bringing it. You don't you know. You didn't buy any. I didn't buy nor bring. Let <laughs> me <laughs> <Like>, clarify. <laughs> like, Neither, like, never bought, never brought. That zoomed bought in nor brought. Bought nor brought. PhD biology. Not brought. <laughs> getting back, getting back to the sloshes thing. Not brought. Not B R A T, but brought, bought, and brought are different. I know they sound similar. I like brats. Lots of the best. Just so. imagine best. how I'm confusing it would be to learn English with all of our similar words. <laughs> yeah, brat, brat, brat. Yeah, but brat. we don't have like gender specific <laughs> language brat. like Spanish. So I feel like we have, I don't know, we have that at least. Everything's kind of the same. Hmm? Um, yeah, you do not have I to mean, learn the gender of bathroom it's easy for us or we already speak it. You know, I'm just saying video like, camera. The, he gets the a pass though, so Pixie, because kangaroos are marsupials, not mammals. There is someone in Spain who decides about, like, the gender of video cameras and bratwurst. Use the gender specific, and you're just wanting to talk to somebody like, hold on. But but no, I was really more more or less just commenting on the similar words and how they sound the same. Yeah. I could see where it'd be really English steals from every language. Shit up. I feel like like listening to a drunk Irishman <laughs> speak English. Yeah, Good you luck. can't understand those anything. Are the best conversations. Like, yeah, those are the best the conversations over and over again. How do you Irishman. know? Like you don't. Those are the conversations. He not only does he not remember, but he probably doesn't know what he's saying either. I've never met a real drunk Irishman. I just imagine. I have. Yeah. Was he like drunk when you met him? Yes. Yeah. Makes sense. Well, he would, and Irish. He was both Irish and drunk. Are you guys familiar with the comic book Creature? <laughs> they made a show about it on AMC. Yeah, that shows. I shit, seen. Man. Yeah, I did that see the, show. the, the, the yeah. artist for that is Irish. His name's Glenn Fabry. He painted all the paintings that are on the covers, and uh, uh, I, I spent many drunken hours with Glenn Fabry when he came to my store in Ohio and did a uh, uh, store signing. I um. It was a big scam, really. I, I, I Signing worked, the store is a scam. No, what, what I did was uh, it was real expensive to get him to come from Ireland to come do a signing in little shitty Worcester, Ohio. And so what I did was I worked at a tour. I, I, I contacted two stores in New York City and one in Jersey and one in Philadelphia and one in Pittsburgh and got all of them to do store signings with him. And split up what the airfare round trip was going to cost between those five stores. Oh, nice! And then I just arranged it that like the first store had to pick him up at LaGuardia, <laughs> and then the owner from the second store had to pick him up from the first store to bring him to his store and put him up for the night. Everybody had to pay for a hotel and to and go to the other store and pick him up. So all I had to do was drive to Pittsburgh and bring him to Worcester and pay for him one night at a Connell Lodge. That's all it cost me. Wow. And everybody else <laughs> that's paid brilliant, a actually. part of Airfare Plus. It, yeah, it was about... It's sort of like an insurance like, policy. It, 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 that's, that's it worked out great, right but there, the yeah. night I picked Split him up, the... so I had him and I had another guy named John McRae the, 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 that were there, but uh, Glenn Fabry was the more famous of the two. And um, I picked him up in Pittsburgh with my ex-wife, and they wanted to go to... They'd heard about the flats in Cleveland, which is like their party area. They wanted to go to the flats... So we took him to the flats. They wanted to play American pool. So we went to a, a cool billiards place and we're there uh, playing pool in this, this kind of high end billiards place that's at the top of this hotel. And um, they were real outgoing, drinking and loud and their accents, they stood out and they were talking to everybody there, all the girls and stuff. And um, all of a sudden about midnight, you could hear a pin drop, just like the whole place gets quiet and they're all looking at this big screen TV and you know, typical Americans can't tell a Scottish accent from an Irish accent from an English accent. They yeah, just think it's yeah. a UK accent. Yeah, exactly. So all of a sudden, everybody's looking at the TV, and Princess Di's just been killed in the oh, car wreck. And everybody's look at this thing in shock, and then they realize, oh, these guys from the UK are here. And they all turn and look at, at, at Glenn and, and uh, John. And 
look yeah. at them for their reaction. And Jen and Glon go, fucking yeah. <laughs> and they're like toasting <laughs> because the Irish fucking hate the royals. Oh, yeah, they you do. Know? And they're like, fucking yeah. As they were, they were toasting beer that Princess Di had just been killed. And then everybody wow. was just aghast. Diana they were hated just like, the royals too, though. They were just like, <laughs> What? You know, you could just tell, like, everybody was just like, they didn't know how to handle it. Like, these two guys they thought were, like, so great and nice. And then they're toasting that she just died. And I was just like, what the hell? And then um, wow. we left there, and I took him to that Econo Lodge. And in the parking lot <laughs> of the Econo Lodge in Worcester, so this was Saturday night and Sunday, they were doing the store signing at my store. So I had to pick him up at 10 the next morning. I drop him off at the Econo Lodge. And in the parking lot was this uh, restaurant called Country Kitchen. It was run by the Amish and the Mennonite. And um, those are good kitchens. I go to pick them up in the morning and I'm banging at that door for like 20 minutes. Mm. They are not answering. They finally answer the door. They're like, I'm like, what the fuck time did you guys go? I drop them off at like one. And I'm like, what time did you guys go to sleep? And he's like, oh, we met some kids over here from the country kitchen and we brought them in. They were drinking beer. And there was like, I guess they brought these Amish kids in there. We're getting drunk with these Amish kids all night in the bedroom, you know? So I'm like, yeah, I much like to drink. Yeah, they do. They will party. And uh, it just was, it was a crazy weekend. It was a crazy, crazy weekend. That's so weird. <laughs> That's my hanging out with drunken Irishman story. The other thing I remember that too is, is really and, cool. I'm glad and you drunken that. Irishman like, I and never, Amish. Have he has a drunken I um, thought once that, about where where I was when I found out Princess Diana. You know what I, I know. I, was, I remember, I know I was, but it wasn't for that. It was I just was, so memorable. I know. Yeah. You know? We were staying at a hotel in but, Napa but Valley when she died. I remember watching it on TV. The other thing I remember about them too was picking them up in Pittsburgh and they bring their beers out from the bar and they get in my little minivan and they're like sitting back there and they're drinking these beers when we're driving through Pittsburgh. We're like, dude, you know, you got to in, in, in uh, America, there's like open carry laws. He goes, yeah, we heard about that. That's crazy. And they just kept fucking drinking. They just wouldn't. <laughs> they were like, yeah, we heard about that. Sounds like you could get in a lot of trouble. But I just drinking the beers. Totalers. Like, totalers. They were like, they could not stop drinking for that two hour drive back to Ohio. Yeah. Why would you? You're going back to Ohio. That's depressing as shit. There's a reason they call it. <laughs> there's a reason they don't call it decent. You guys Britain. are over here talking shit. They call it, moved they call away it from Ohio. They call it Great Britain for a reason. Yeah. They were so excited to drink like God American fucks. beers, like Budweiser and stuff. Like they thought Budweiser was just like this great beer. They were like, oh, oh no, we gotta get another Budweiser. What you are you know? saying like, that Budweiser <laughs> isn't great beer? It's uh, it's just funny. Like that's how beers. we would think when we're there. King. We would want to have you Guinness hate America or something. You know it is we, the king of beers. It's, it's the king of beers. It's like they take Guinness for granted. Like we would right. take Budweiser for granted. It just, exactly. Are you a, a it is always what you don't have. Yeah. Don't like Budweiser. Yeah. <laughs> Freedom fries. Doesn't like Budweiser. Freedom I'm a fan fries. Of Bud Light. It's Freedom like water. kisses. It's just simple hydration. Yeah. Freedom kisses. Yeah, it's, it's a freedom toast. What are you doing? Like over there, just reading poetry <laughs> <laughs> about freedom. Yeah, he's just doing spoken word. <laughs> like, I love America. <laughs> I, I ramble. I French fries, yeah. <laughs> egg McMuffin, egg Mc... <laughs> cocaine, <laughs> Budweiser, <laughs> king of beers, king of beers, the Allen Ginsberg of fast food. <laughs> Is that a challenge? You want me to write a Ginsbergian poem about <laughs> fast food drive throughs What? Well, <laughs> no. If you feel like you have the mustard for it, go go at it. I don't. Yeah. I never Do thought about it. Just, I never thought about it. You just mentioned it. What's the Allen Ginsberg bit on Combat Rock? Right? <laughs> on Clash Combat Rock. Uh, uh, he does. He does spoken word on the Clash Combat Rock album. No, oh, really. Yeah. The. Uh, Starved in Metropolis, Slam Dance, Cosmopolis. That song, you know what I mean? Enlightened. I don't. Ghetto Defendant is the name of the song. Ghetto Defendant. What's your it favorite, Muppet song? favorite Muppet song? Muppet. Muppet song. Favorite Muppet song. It'd have to be one of those ones from that Muppet movie that uh Rainbow Connection. No, that newest that newest answer. Muppet movie that had the had the dude from Freaks and Geeks in it, and all the songs were by the guy from Flight of the Concords. Oh yeah, that has some. Had some good songs in it. I love Flight of the Concords. So I never got into it. I had a history teacher that was that's a what I was gonna say, asshole. by the way. Pixie said mana mana. Nobody my uh my four year old when he was two, uh he would have me play that song just over and over again. <laughs> it's a great song. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, p- punk. What's your what's your favorite Muppet song? I actually don't like the Muppets. That's Rainbow sad. Connection, come on now. I mean, you got something against I fake saw, Oz or what? Connection is like a tearjerker. Right? I saw one of the old Muppets movie in a drive-in this uh, a couple summers ago when COVID hit, so they weren't putting out new movies, so they were right. playing reruns. They did a. Uh, that's a weird acid trip. I acid and went to see that Muppets movie. The original one or like the same? Yeah, and that spoken word Jeanette Carey is There's by Allen Ginsberg. There's a that's Nazi. actually him on the record. In the Muppets movie, he's like the main bad guy, and it's a it's a fun watch tripping balls sitting outside. But Dark Crystal watching puppets come out of the trees, tell you what, <laughs> you can't well, drive if you're out count of Dark Crystal. Enough. Then what do you count Empire since Yoda was a Muppet too? <laughs> Uh, so you're not talking about I'm the TV show that. Empire, you're talking about the Star Wars film, right? Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to clarify. <laughs> yeah. I would about love the a Muppet version government. of the TV show Empire, though. That sounds amazing. <laughs> just say with Muppets. <laughs> that sounds amazing. I think I'm going to go release some water. You don't got to tell everybody that, Mike. Wasn't Empire? What, we like, hope everything what, comes out okay. What, Jesse Smollett? Or it whatever? usually does. Yeah. So I'm not predicting calamity. The song that I liked on that last Muppet movie, I don't remember the whole song, but it was like, there's this great line in it that says something like, if I'm a Muppet, then it must be a very manly Muppet. But if I'm a man, then I'm a Muppet of a man or something like that. Wow. Just oh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's on the newer one, right? Yeah. The the newest newest one. It won, I think he won, I honest, think he won I, uh, I can't Oscar for Best Song that year. Songs. <laughs> Oh well, there you it's go. It's just funny. It's like I don't know why. It's, <laughs> I didn't like Oscar the Grouch sing one or something. No, I'm sure no. he did. Probably. <laughs> didn't he? There you go. He's probably I got loved, one that I would like. like we, not, we, I loved when Prince cake. was on we the like, Muppet Show and did uh, Sesame Street. Now, did you ever see when Prince, when Prince was <laughs> on the Muppet Show and he sung uh, the Barney and Friends, Starfish and Starfish and Coffee? Barney scared me as a child, man. It's a fucking stuffed animal that turns into a dinosaur when adults aren't around. Always oh, trying to hug. Always <laughs> oh, trying right? to touch you and hug you. And you remember that? Get away from me! You remember <laughs> the purple freeze? Remember the game like, Doom? He's like the weird uncle. <laughs> I had an uncle party. <laughs> Do you remember the game Doom? <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, I remember Doom. So my nephews, I have a game for a long time, but my nephews really wanted to play Doom, and my sister wouldn't let them play Doom because they were like five and it was too bloody. And then I found out you could download this things called Wads. Do you remember this? For Doom, for the for for the PC, you could download these things called Wads, and you could replace everything in the Doom game with other things that they made it interactive, so people could make their own crap. And so I downloaded all these Wads, and I changed all the Caco demons to Barney the dinosaur. And I changed the chainsaw to a giant toothbrush and the blood to foam. I went through and changed all these things. So it made it like a game kids could play. So it was like Barney the dinosaur was the monster. And then the kids had to go around <laughs> with a giant toothbrush and kill him by brushing him with the toothbrush. And then I downloaded all those wads in there, replaced it and burned it on a CD and gave it to my sister so the kids could play it. And they just, it was funny. She's like, I don't know if this is better. The kids are still killing Barney. And I'm like, but they're just really brushing his teeth to death. It's not, it's not bloody anymore. And she's like, I don't know if I approve, but you've given it to him now. So. I don't know, man. It's pretty funny. Wait, why do you, what, what, can we fix your mic again? <laughs> it's every every item in that it. anything that was in the Doom game that you could pick up and interact with was a, was a file called a dot it's, it's not, d or me. dot w o d s wads. And yeah. so yeah. the samurai yeah. sword was a wads. Uh, everything was a right, wads. Right, and you, right, as right. long as you just redrew it, yeah. you could just down, up name it samurai sword and put it up and it'd be a toothbrush. <laughs> and so it was pretty Peter cool. And people made them all hey. over, all and put them all online, and you just download them. Right. You're teaching kids no, good, kid. you know, like high hyg- dental hygiene skills. Absolutely. While murdering dinosaurs. Well, brushing their teeth too hard. Yeah. I mean, gingivitis. Gingivitis. They Has anyone it. here ever done crack? <laughs> no. no. Show of hands no. who's done crack. No. I heard the leading uh, cause of smell crack or is, done uh, crack. Smoking That's, cigarettes, by the way. Mm. Cigarettes are disgusting. They're disgusting. <laughs> but yeah, I, I do like cigarette flavored uh, nicotine vaping. Mike, why don't you, uh, the biologist, Mike, will you tell us more about uh, more about uh, gingivitis, please? About what? Gingivitis. I worked at the dental school for two I years before I worked for the medical school. Medical school. That's actually true. <laughs> I can tell you about gingivitis if you really want to hear about it, but 
It's 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 it's, it is it is the itis it is the itis of the gingiva. So you know, only only oral disease named after a member of the Gilligan's Island cast. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, gingiva. She was from Virginia too, gingiva. I remember her. (laughs) (laughs) Well, shit, Mike. She was a ginger of a variety. Oh my god. Peter Graves returned crack once. Did you have the receipt still? <laughs> you have the receipt? <laughs> Dude, I know he's lying because Kmart, Kmart is being closed this down is, for a long this time. This is subpar crack. I have, I have, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> it's returned crack. <laughs> that shit just made my whole week, Peter. Thank you. <laughs> 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 oh my god <laughs> i gotta hear this shit uh <laughs> booze and weed that's where peter, i stopped unfortunately peter tell me tell me the, about the time that you returned crack <laughs> <laughs> oh since i'm playing the part yes, of peter tonight, yeah, yes, you're, peter. Why, you're no, cosplaying peter ahead, tonight no, is that like someone shows their butt and then now another person really shows their butt is that now. returning crack like someone pulls their pants down and shows their ass and then another person does it is that the return of crack the return of the dad joke oh <laughs> oh dad no dad uh Polly, have, dad. have you ever done have you ever done crack cocaine no of course not why would i ever do that? you have a good story <laughs> no have you ever ran your nose through somebody's crack <laughs> well that's a different story was there, and was your and was your stage yeah. name cocaine <laughs> <laughs> well see that was just one time on a on a porn set you know <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Man, nah. I think I think I, I think I've Never seen her. Crack I before. think I've seen her Pornhub plays. You know, like I think her name's Cocaine, right? That's her like Pornhub name. Is that <laughs> <a> Pornhub, <laughs> that's an educational her, website, her right? <laughs> it is a hub for. Porn I want to tell you guys here. I haven't night gotten to for do punk it, rock but... night. What, think, what's that like? It's a I hub think, for punk rock night. It's the punk rock night hub. Well, I know the it's, punk rock night hub. P- Pen- Pennington, hub. Pennington, would Pennington like to say something. You, like, whoa, you can you don't create have your a race. profile. Uh, I'm, sp- you, you I'm got smoking. The speaking, you got the speaking smoke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please speak. Go, <laughs> full, <laughs> go full camera. What were we talking about? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what were we talking about? Oh shit! You can create uh, a Pornhub profile. Yeah, you can create a Pornhub, a Pornhub, Pornhub profile. profile, and you can upload videos. I'm sure you know about it, but I think bands should do it, right? You just stay on Pornhub, and then like Wayne Pennington and the Poor Valley pops up after you finish whacking it. Your phone just happens to be sitting on the fucking this fuck, sink or this like fuck. the side table, and it just starts playing some fucking wicked guitar licks, and you're like, all right. I fucking dig this, and then you check it out on YouTube, you know? It might work. I think it's a G. I think we need to do it. Anybody can make a Pornhub account. That just shocks me, one. This episode of Fucking Sponsored by Wayne Pennington. Or or maybe maybe I've got a better suggestion. Actually, why don't you take somebody else's porn that's on there? And then make music do the soundtrack to it. To it. <laughs> Dude, why, don't you, I got it. why don't you score it? I got it. That's not the direction I'm trying to go. In. You score it, and then the boss is going to music video at the end. It can say, I do a recording Wayne studio. In Poor Valley. You you know, I've got a recording studio. No one wants Wayne, to come Wayne, watch porn in your basement with you, Mike. I challenge I challenge you now when you write you write the the you compose something around <laughs> say say a 15 minute and 38 second porn video you 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 do the like sound tracking part of it come to my studio I'll record it for free you know how for many free. times I'll record that for free you know how many times I don't want to watch the video a film to write the story. I don't want to watch the video you know how familiar you would be with that I, I, yeah, I, actually, I, want, I want you to write it I want you to write it is is like folk tunes I mean if you got the you money to folk shovel tunes, into folk that tune. man I'll write the whole fucking thing be, be, <laughs> psych rock folk <laughs> tunes over 15 minutes and 38 seconds of porn on a, yeah, on a serious note why, I think that's a great idea I actually think 15 minutes and 38 seconds because i'm just some random is that score, like your, is that, your that is my is that how fa- long you last mm, it's the it's a <laughs> you know how you can like search you know you can like google search or you know, like search put oh, 15 man. minute and 38 second videos and that's the only shit i watch here let's 
let's let's take a serious moment. Let's, Wayne actually has something productive to say. I, I was just gonna say, I think sco- I don't scoring I stuff. Score, scoring stuff is actually like a good idea that some band should do. Like there was a band, Mike's probably the only oh, one that's around long enough to remember him, but do you remember a band from Bloomington that used to play down here called Monster Zero Orchestra? Yep. And they they were like 18 pieces. It was crazy. And they would just <coughs> they would broadcast like an old rubber suit monster movie like Godzilla or Mothra. And they would create a whole new score for it. They even had a guy that someone has done that it. locally so yeah, that larry has the idea to do that and play in front of it but and do a live show I, like that I that think, would be killer yeah, yeah. yeah. wayne will then draw um, that picture track of... suit, the tracksuit lifestyle guys i had a show i was trying to do and i kind of tried to talk them into doing something like that but i was like because so much of their stuff was instrumental and i was like i think you guys <laughs> should take and score like a fucking johnny quest episode or something like this that's like an action like an action cartoon. Wayne will make the, Wayne will make the movie score, poster. Score. I said, you could just take one of your songs you already got and find something that kind of lines up yeah. with it. But we put this up behind it. We put a bunch of old yeah. TVs and they were like, you know, I don't know. It just was too ambitious for them. They did not, Wayne they did will, not dig on the idea. But I was like, I had some, some, a couple other bands that were like, I think the shakeups were releasing a CD that had to do with Saturday morning cartoons. And there I had, I had like two bands somehow that were already oriented towards cartoons on it. And I needed a third one. And I was trying to talk them into like, you guys could just like score a Johnny quest episode with like your instrumental tracks. And they're like, eh, I don't really want to do it, but I think it's a, a so there's a, there's a, a, a niche to fill there. I to think to summarize, can, to, summarize to summarize, Wayne Pennington is going to score a 15 minute and 38 second Don't video. Do, and then and then and then and then Wayne Birch <laughs> is going to is going to do like the poster for the the movie, right? The movie poster. And then we're gonna put that up on Pornhub. Is that the way? It... Well, he does want to score something, but he wants to. I'll make, record. I'll re- my, my, my point. I, I'll record the audio. Oh, Once you have it scored, bring time. it over, and I'll I'll record it. And then you can give it to him, and he can make a poster. He wants to write a western and score that. I am writing a western. Yeah. I'm is writing a, a western a, film. Is it a porn western? It's not a porn western. No. That's cool. I might try and show yeah. some ass. Do you have a name for it? <laughs> Uh, the working name right now. No, it's not secret. I'll talk all about it. I don't give a shit. It'll probably be a couple of years before it's really out and released and produced. But uh, so far, it's about this like theoretical town that is uh, some kind of metaphor for uh, purgatory, like the middle ground. So everybody there's dead, but they don't know it. So they're there for their sins and whatnot. Uh, I don't know. I don't really have the storyline built out yet, but I wrote the first, second, and third song, and they all kind of just followed that line. So it's gonna be weird. I fucking hate horses. It's a right. lot. I don't like horses at all. So we're gonna have like sticks with the horse heads on them yeah. and shit like that. It's, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna it be says, a good time. Have you seen the Star Trek? It says episode, right there, Spectre Wayne Pennington the owes gun. me money from like Wayne Pennington and the Uncle poor of the gun. Valley. It's like their Western episode. <laughs> what is it? Classic Star Trek. There was an episode, third season, I think, called Spectre of the Gun. Have I wasn't allowed that? to watch TV. Well, until look I up was that episode 37. and watch it. Like it would, it would, it would maybe be a good inspiration for for your idea. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remind me of that. Okay, Spectre of I'll the watch Gun. It. Spectre of the Gun. That sounds like a badass song, man. Yeah. Well, like since Five Year Missions done a song about every episode of Star Trek, it is a song. So I'm sure there's a Spectre of the Gun song out there. I don't know. I, I don't remember that one, so it must not be one of their like more best memorable. Ones. Yeah, it must not be that memorable. Apologies to which ever Five Year Mission guy did that one. But Deep I don't, Space Nine is it a Deep remember. Space Nine cut? What? So was it a Deep Deep Space Nine cut or? No, no, no. It only was, the original. It was, it was only original. Uh, yeah, from the original. Although, are there the, Deep Space Nine bands? No, but the doc. There's a documentary on Prime called uh, "What We Left Behind." It's like a two-hour documentary <laughs> about Deep Space Nine, with like all the stars and interviewing them and the creators. And the end credits, the music is by Five Year Mission. Oh wow! Yeah, it's kind of cool. I don't know what they got paid for that, but it's pretty neat. Hell yeah! So uh, we're about halfway through the show, or maybe What's greater up, than halfway through the show. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, play a video from our sponsors at Punk Rock Night. Punk rock. Looking for something to do Saturday night? Do you like punk rock? Well, look no further. Every Saturday night is Punk Rock Night at the Melody Inn. The best local, regional, and touring acts hit the stage every Saturday for an amazing time. Check punkrocknight.com for details 
or follow us on all the social medias to get weekly updates on what's going on. Doors are at 8 p.m. Shows start at 9 p.m. It's a bar, folks, so you have to be at least 21 to join in on the fun. And hey, there's free parking. Plus, every Thursday we present the Peer In Live Feed Show, where we talk about last week's show, preview this week's show, and announce all the big things we have coming up. Punk Rock Night, a proud sponsor of Chopped Liver. Liver. And we're back. All right. Shout out to uh, Punk Rock Night. Uh, thank you, Rush, for making that video. Thank you. Thank you, everybody at Punk Rock Night. Thank you, Punk Rock Night. Uh, for being a sponsor of Chop Deliver. Yeah, I sure did. It was a bad joke, wasn't it? So uh, we're back with uh, Wayne Pennington and Wayne Birch, both of the local art scene of some sort, polypunk and uh, PhD in biology, uh, Mike Makey. Bachelor's degree. Bachelor's degree, same difference. Yeah. But 23 years of experience. In zoology. He studied snails for six years in Poland. When I was four, we'll talk about it. When like I was four, four. So from right. four to ten, you was in New Poland. New Poland. No, it was old Poland. Oh, old, old Poland, <laughs> counting snails. They weren't well, New Poland until 2002. <laughs> new Poland was called Old Poland that. for a while until they changed the name back to New Poland. So <laughs> it was. It depends on the era, the year you're talking about, which Poland. Can so I you're a time traveler now. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> but I was born in '67, so I traveled that much through <laughs> space time with all of you when you arrived corn hub that's great jeff corn hub oh it's good to see you on here, dude. <laughs> that is the yeah. indiana that version of porn hub where you're all the girls are like using that them. would be a hilarious music video is whatever you did Shoot like the monsanto the video just, even, just had the band playing but if you had a logo in the corner have you seen the monsanto on the video? video that looked like porn hub it said corn hub be, be i've got a poor hub logo built up for t-shirts corn for hub the poor valley band. that's hilarious. that's great that's, that's, that's smart that's, even better. that's, even that's better. funny yeah, it's gonna be a fun. You can find that on merch tables at shows. Go to Wayne Pennington Music. Hub, com. <laughs> yeah, pr- yeah, Proud Hub is Plug. well. I guess that's that's <laughs> like you know the uh, LGBTQ friendly hub. Well, Proud Hub or, or the Proud Boys, so it could go either way. <laughs> Depends on whether it's boys or hubs. It's hubs and boys is a big difference. For people, hubs and really boys, boys and hubs, hub first. boys, yeah, hub boys, Proud Boys, movement. hub boys. You think that was a conscious <laughs> you know the, the are you are you guys talking about porn again? The, I, I saw that, man. The head of the Indiana Proud Boys is the guy. That I'm overstimulated over here. So Too many yeah, voices. Oh, uh, down with the Proud Boys. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah, mm. the, the the head of them uh, is the guy that used to be the head of the Vinlander Social Club. So why are we talking about guy. pieces of shit on my fucking podcast? That's to right. warn people about pieces of shit for when they out here. The poor boys on porn corn hub. We have more of a more than a few people in the scene that are, are ex members of that. With now they got their nice rockabilly Uh-oh. cover up tattoos. Uh oh. <laughs> I'd rather not know. Yeah. What's your real? favorite best surface not to, know, to do actually. cocaine off? <laughs> a lot of them. The more you know, the less you like. The sometimes I'll just say that. So, uh, speaking of our sponsors at Punk Rock Night. Uh, this Saturday, just this last one's got me. Uh, we got Scott Invasion at Punk Rock Night. It's uh, Circle City Deacons College oh, in Nahal- oh, yeah. Nahalis Underground. Nahalis. Never heard of them. The other two are the other two are badass. Cool. I've not heard of the last one. Yes, which means which, which means I nothing. Read, I was totally reading that off my phone. Everybody, <laughs> just to be clear, that's not an iPhone. That's a my phone. Uh, my so, uh, during the during the uh, sponsor break there paulie and i had a serious discussion and it was uh, serious starting next in february 2023 we will be live streaming the show to our website pornhub.com forward slash we are chat liver that's right follow us on everything now live streaming in february to pornhub that's the next how how we're gonna get how we're gonna get that ability is Polly, take it away. <laughs> he's exploiting his, he's exploiting his, his, his career. They don't take they're, shit they're, down on he's, he's using his, really he's really using his connections it. at Pornhub from his, from his, from his For, career. To can I, you pull the mic off your face, man? Sorry, I'm sorry. You're fine. I just don't want you to. <laughs> 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 the whole show. Very sorry, very sorry. All right. So, but for real, though, we do have a fucking TikTok and all the reels that we make. <laughs> 
for our show, we put them up there. We ain't got shit going on now. But what guess what? You as, soon, as soon as we get enough followers on TikTok, then we can start live streaming there too. And that would be dope. Have you ever used TikTok? So guess what I'm about to say. Oh, Anybody? Shit. Is that really a thing? If you're on TikTok, <laughs> follow us at We Are Chop Liver. Or you can just search for bullshit. How is saying you're on TikTok gayer than saying you're on Pornhub? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Man, I can't get to, I can't get into on it, my man. Forehead, I need a TikTok. Hey. You guys make shorts and stuff. No, <laughs> like the whole like, no. I tend to wear them. Yeah, <laughs> you know the you uh, do uh, TikTok like is the number one streaming it is. video yeah, in I the know. world. TikTok is a close yeah. number two, by the way. TikTok. You guys should do some gender releases and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, they pop the balloon oh and it explodes. Get Maury on the show. It's like it's black. There it it's is. Yeah. Thanks for sharing the leak, Jack. There you go. Is that it? It's You're not the dad. You're not the like, dad. September 11th, I saw somebody posted some video. It was like the plane crashing into the Twin Towers. And then the the flames all coming out they had a colored pink and it said worst gender release party ever <laughs> on <laughs> september wow. 11th yeah i will Holy say this and this shit. is this is terrible but I'm, I'm gonna be Wait, honest i had left the day that that happened literally like an hour after it happened the first the first song that definitively popped into my head was benny and the jets but but benny, benny and the jets. the jets it popped into my head instantly i'm like man that's a terrible benny. thought but it is benny Benny, 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 and the Jets. Benny, that Benny Laden, and Benny the Laden, Jets. and the Jets. Ben Laden, <laughs> Benny. <laughs> Terrible thing to think I, about. I was at the pawn shop when I it happened, and um, it is true. I, I I was in the habit of when I was. I don't know if Shep was the same kind of manager I was, but when I was a manager, kind of manager. I, I I I like to train my assistants to do everything on the premise that I was developing them, and then I didn't have to do my stuff. And so <laughs> well, that's how you operated. That's yeah, how that's I how I you operated. delegate. And so, yeah, I was big on delegation and yeah. developing my people. So this girl, Debbie Humphrey, I was training her to do all the management work with the hopes of her being a manager. And so she's up in the office doing all that stuff. And I'm down there with my sleeves rolled up. Like, it's not like I wouldn't do anything. I, I would just rather do grunt work, you know. And so I'm down there getting all the TVs ready, turning them all on. And we'd have them all under the same channel. I'm turning all these yeah. TVs on. And um, my my ex-wife now, my, ex, my wife calls me and says, are you watching TV? I said, I'm just turning the wall on. She goes, a plane just crashed into the Twin Towers. I said, oh, my God, that's crazy. So I flip it over to that channel, and I'm watching, and Debbie's like, what's going on down there? And I said, this is nuts. I'm watching the, the fire and all this stuff. And and sh she goes, what's going on? I said, this plane just crashed into the Twin Towers. She goes, oh, my God. And I said, yeah, it's, it's all happening right now. I'm like watching. And then all of a sudden, I go, look, they're rerunning it because I see another plane come. I said, oh, wow. they're rerunning nope, it. that's the and other one. the plane the crashes other. into it. She goes. If they're rerunning it, why is the other tower burning? And I was like, uh -oh. oh, shit. <laughs> I just remember that was like my thought first, like, oh, it's an accident. And on the other point, I'm like, oh, we're under attack. You know what I mean? Like, but I just remember that was like, I'm like, look, they're rerunning it. That happened <laughs> 10 days after my, after I was uh, let go from Eli Lilly, which was September 1st of that year. My son was like uh, a few months old and got up, you know, my son, he was a few months old sleeping upstairs i got up and like turned the tv on and 9 11. yeah that was i think and then I, wa was, uh... and I watched i watched the second one go because they did they're, like reporting about the first one like they didn't know what was going on at all like you know they didn't know what kind of plane it was they didn't know anything and then the second one hit and then i'm like oh shit. i watched that happen i remember it was crazy and then and then I went, went upstairs and wept for my son for the rest of the you know as soon as we started declaring war and, and terror. Polly, uh, where were you when the towers fell? Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> where were you when they built the Tower to Heaven? Oh, Babylon. And then when did and and where were you when Diana was it looked killed? Like you might have been somewhere close. <laughs> like <laughs> like they released some pictures. <laughs> At one point, you're like, well, shit, do I keep it? <laughs> <laughs> really careful about facial uh, hair for, yeah. for a couple of years, I imagine. I mean, it's, it's we'll stuck. Go, we'll go full I can't get the shit off of there. <laughs> do you, do you Actually, one of the guys at work last week fucking uh, was using some fucking insulating spray foam for window and door, right? And he got the shit in his beard, oh, and he no. came into work the next day, and he was like completely smooth face. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, dude. <laughs> And this this is Dude, what happened on 9/11. No, no, this is not what happened on 9/11. <laughs> 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 
Keith, I wasn't. Peter, man, Peter uh, no, that was just the porn I was watching. <laughs> Peter Gray's poses poses a very significant question. So, which of the guests have fucked a ghost? So that is a Peter Graves question. I have panel? never fucked a ghost. Panel? No. Neither have I. I've never I mean, I'm ghost. not saying but I you know every time. What I what I it depends on how cute the ghost is. Obviously, I've but... heard that. Yeah. <laughs> but why don't you ask the scientists? <laughs> yes. Does that I've mean I don't really ghost. have a gag reflex? Like I don't. I guess I the... do cough a lot. <laughs> Are you talking about fucking ghosts and gag reflexes? I don't. I'm, I miss that. Segway. We oh, went from so. 9-11 to <laughs> fucking ghosts. You can you can thank Peter Graves. I'm pretty sure that Bigfoot was in one of the towers. <laughs> That's why we can't fucking that, find him. All the Bigfoots yeah. were in were in we're in building seven. You remember building seven, right? What yeah, it was it all was of the Bigfoots, all of the Bigfoots were put Bigfoot in New York. Right? What's your favorite shitty cereal? <laughs> the uh Want to thank everybody for joining in today, like and commenting, and if it's shitty, why would we it assure you here at Chocolate Lover, we you. take you ourselves very that. serious, and very professional. I loved Quisp. Quisp is good. Quisp. Yeah, Quisp is good. Quisp. I, I, and now that I'm off carbs, mostly, I would kill for some Quisp. It was a real gut check when Kroger put it all on sale. We done talking about fucking ghosts now. And they had it all in clearance for like a dollar twenty a box. Was it, was it, was it and I was like, I should just buy all these boxes. There was like sixty of them. Was it Cookie Crisp? And I could just give up on my keto diet. I'm was like, it Cookie no, Crisp? Uh, no Quisp. Q U I S P. There was a Cookie Quisp too, wasn't no, there? No Cookie Crisp. Oh, Crisp. Quisp was Quisp, the little Crisp. alien with the propeller on his head. Yeah, I remember him. Drawn by Jay Ward of Bullwinkle fame. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Oh, that's interesting. So is Captain Crunch. Crunch Berries is my favorite uh, childhood. That's a high end cereal. I like. I like the berries. The, ba- it's the berry part of the berries. Did any? It's not bad. You know, my like wife greasy, like greasy oat berries. I, I don't that's eat the, this the, anymore. But instead of cereal, I used to just bust up graham crackers and eat graham crackers and milk oh, like yeah. cereal with sugar on top. And my wife would <laughs> chastise <laughs> chast- <laughs> me about that. And that's not cereal. Was that anybody else's cereal growing up? What about animal crackers? crackers? I mean, animal crackers I mean, is a cereal. Is a- good way to go to animal crackers i bet yeah it seems yeah. similar yeah graham crackers are awesome though. i'm sure that i've never thought I, about graham i've crackers actually well. seen somebody eat that I, that's just how i would just get a pack i would bust it up put sugar on top and just like with an animal with milk. crackers and milk and my ex-wife was like that's not and my wife was like that's not cereal why are you doing that someone someone has chimed in rice yeah. checks sid yeah. shot has chimed in rice checks rice checks so, yeah that's, it's that's kind of a boring choice right, but yeah. well i mean, I mean if you had enough it's, sugar it's, it's not rice bad krispies it's got a lot of fiber it's in just it. rice krispies that have a weird shape basically. yeah i mean i like the puff shape of a 911 fucking yeah, ghosts back to 911 ghosts and cereal all right and porn uh, no not back if, a, right. ghost, okay. corn, corn if a ghost brings me a bowl of cereal on 911 i'm fucking it <laughs> how's that <laughs> Uh, all right so now we're talking which about year? fucking which cereal. year which year are we talking about what's your favorite show you've ever cereal played bringing ghosts. my favorite show that i've ever played yeah. yeah what comes to mind what's in there fuck man that's a hard question it's heavy i wasn't ready for it uh nice work Whoa. it got me Whoa. um favorite show i ever played fuck man God, I, it's so easy. That to fuck man I got the worst show really I've ever played. When you opened up for Fuck Man that one time, that was Do you brilliant. have like a favorite venue? Oh, well, it's got to be the Mel. It's the Mel, yeah. But sure. when you're yeah. like, what's your favorite venue you're... outside the Mel? I do like playing the Mel. That's a good spot. You know, no, his favorite one spot. outside of the Mel is going to be the Fourth Street Dive in Louisville. You guys should be on a couple show. Am I, where, am I, am like, I channeling I you, you right? Questions and yeah, Wayne I'm just writes guessing. them down, and you're like, what yeah, I think right. is in Jeff's brain. So uh, the best show that comes to mind, like I enjoyed the most, and it's like a, it's a couple of reasons why it's just not the songs we played or necessarily the reaction that we got. It was a good crowd. It was in Chicago at some Reggie's. Nope, no, it was a. Uh, Rosemont like Horizon, a com- not like comic Horizon. store, but like it was all like cool shit, like like toy, like like m- you know comic toys and like South Park toys. It's, it's all nostalgic shit, like cool ass shit. I don't even know. Was it on Clark Street? 
I got the business. I come up. I got got the business card in my jacket. Actually, <laughs> I keep it in my pocket for situations just like this. Oh, let's see. Should have worn my jacket. Anyways, oh. it was a good turnout. We played a really good set. Um, it was really fun. Um, fiber, but when uh, tight like a fiber, <clears throat> we were fiber at that time. Tight like a fiber. Yep. Were we? Yeah. Tight like a fiber. Fuck, I don't know, man. I can't keep track. But what well, was super dope? It was a really good show. We had a lot of fun. And uh, after the show, we went and saw um, Sunset Society playing in Chicago as well. We like literally left our venue appropriate time and then went there and they just started their set. That's fucking cool. perfect. Oh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> that was uh, nice. that was Chicago. So and that was the last time we played before we got back together. Which member of Fiber's <laughs> girlfriend worked at the optometry store in plainfield this is uh, a critical question that is uh lazy boys x oh. gotcha because well, it was right x. next to my check smart we shared, we shared the parking oh, lot full circle we shared the parking lot and i remember seeing the fiber sticker on there and going in and saying who do you know in fiber? oh that's my boyfriend so i just for right whatever on. reason i just remembered that yep good old nick jordan yep who's my favorite golfer it was he really Nick Jordan. Yeah. He's my favorite red flag. <laughs> I liked when he played. I like when he played basketball for the Bulls. Oh uh, yeah, I thought that was his uncle or something. Anyways, uh, where were we? <laughs> Let's get on the subject of Nick Jordan. Oh yeah, you asked me in my favorite show. Yeah, yeah, that was probably that's probably my favorite show that comes to mind was playing in Chicago with Fiber, and uh, yeah, stop by another show. Wayne Pennington. What was your gateway drug that took you from being uh, into metal and over into being into uh, folk and hippie music? What was the what was the band that, the that what was the you know the band that like the gateway band? Yeah, yeah. Like for like for me, like I was like growing up listening to arena like shitty arena rock, and What's then the I thing? got the London Calling album, and, and I never like loved it. my horizons. It it's like it's what was available, and everyone listened to it. My first show was like uh, Slipknot, Coheed and Cambria, and Trivium. But at some point, it changed. Are so you doing like hippie folk stuff? So like, when did it change? What was the? Well, I always catalyst? I always wrote the uh, songwriter stuff, and uh, my family in Virginia played bluegrass, and then my family here played like rock, like Kiss and shit. You like Woody Guthrie? And uh, you know, I just recently started going down the Woody Guthrie hole. I I don't like uh, seek music out that often. It's kind of weird. I, I had a talk with somebody recently about that. If I'm uh, doing something and I, I want to listen to something, I listen to podcasts or some shit like that. I, I find it hard to listen to music. So it's, I don't know. It's kind of odd. Like I said, I, I got into Tom Waits after people told me I sounded like Tom, Tom Waits awesome. and shit like that. I like podcasts when I'm driving and then like music yeah. when I'm working. Mm, yeah yeah when i'm painting yeah, i've got totally music on when i'm driving it's podcasts yeah i don't know i listen to podcasts at work so uh or, or read books quote unquote read <clears throat> get so into the Rialto report i'm peter, telling you peter graves says i don't really know if i feel like my question was properly addressed peter graves but, is saying a lot but okay that broke down halfway here yeah That's well peter. exactly but and then and then pixie lish says what are so your, what we, are your guys' I, favorite I already local put these bands? Comments, oh, I, I already know. put these comments on the screen. Like, well, I, I'm not that. watching that. My part. favorite local bands right now. Um, the favorite remote, local bands. the remote controls for sure. Um, G Wiz, G Wiz is awesome. Pilots are great. Fuck. The resounding babies are great. G Wiz, G Wiz, awesome. pilots though. Yes, you're right. The, the, those are are. are towards the top of my food chain right now yeah. um getting back into living proof i haven't listened to him for a long time because leonard has been out in california he just came back and rejoined the band so i'm uh into living proof i just saw their show at the jazz kitchen the other night um great funk and r&b there's a good show going at the jazz kitchen right actually uh, tomorrow at the back door pub you can find a good show i'll be playing with two other songwriters in a songwriter circle if anybody's looking for something to do tomorrow with the where's, backdoor pub, where's the where's backdoor, the backdoor pub, at? pub at? Seven to nine. Where is that at? You know, Google it. Somebody in the uh, comments, Google it. it in in the Wayne, you're or? the Googler. Come on, Google it. Come no. On, come on. Back check. Is it in another town? Mm. No. It, is, I mean, what is it's it called? in Indiana. What is it called? It's the backdoor pub. 
There's the back door pub. It's in Indiana, pub. but it's in Indianapolis. Do it in Bloomington. German. Who is the back door pub? Check it out. It's Bloomington. Check it out. Maybe. Is it Bloomington? Is it Bloomington? I don't think so. That doesn't sound right. That's a the back door Bloomington is what I'm getting well, I'm coming up. Who is the and then Brook, pub? Indiana is also coming I'm up. from so. Indy, so it's about an hour. It says one is Bloomington and one is back is that Brook, Indiana. Even... Brook? It's one of those. Go to WaynePenningtonMusic.com. It's on right the calendar. You'll yeah, show up yeah, in yeah, Brook, yeah. Indiana, and they'll for be the like, proper, no for the proper Brook, address. <laughs> the proper what if you address. show up at the wrong one and they got like bingo right. going on? Because yeah, it's yeah. the other back door pub. There's karaoke on that in Bloomington. Sometimes you hit Brooke, the wrong back door. Brooke has Wayne. <laughs> I learned that in the Boy Scouts. Bloomington's got karaoke oh, that shit. night. And the back door pub is oh, actually. I that shit too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The back door pub used to be Bullwinkles. I'll just leave it there. Anyway, so Jesus, this podcast is out of control. It's way out, it's of, control. out of control. Like, <laughs> my gummy is wore off already. Like, this is like what is fuck, I fucking just happening? Like, Does anybody have an extra gummy they could deliver here for? No, no, I got one here. But... All right. <laughs> so uh, I don't know, Polly. What's your favorite local bands right now? Uh, in this moment, um, the run up. I'm really oh, fascinated. Yeah, absolutely, like you were saying, the yeah. band in I this moment. For forgetting the run up. <laughs> I was like, I didn't see that I, one coming. That's fucking. I'm turning say, in my cool kids card. <laughs> you and I forgot the, the run up. W. I will say. I will say this. I like the run up since when they were locked up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There's, um, a, there's. But I mean, I also do. You know, like Coolidge is awesome. And, Coolidge is awesome. Man. Um. You know, and the Deacons. That's that's gonna be a great show this weekend. Yes, it is. I love ska. I mean, I, I was just always say, it have... like you're I, I, more of a ska guy than I knew. I did not know that. Yeah, Operator is also an excellent band. So. Yeah, great. Um, yeah. I mean, so there's a little brief in, so, intel. So what how far you, do you Mike? go back, Polly? Did you see the Malcontents back in the day? Were you oh, around yeah, for that? Um, no. They were when I first was coming on the scene. They were like the hot band Kristen leap used to manage them she was oh, their really? manager yeah, yeah she was their manager they had a probably one of the biggest cd releases in indianapolis ever like they did two shows back to back they did an all ages show at the emerson and the openers were the wise store i don't think so no, i'm kidding no their openers were rhyme fest <laughs> who goes on to be nationally signed richard from margo nuclear so and so who was called Ar archer avenue back then archer avenue, yeah. and uh yeah. and then the next night the the that was the, they had the all ages re release show at the emerson and then the next night they had the regular one at the patio and um i can't remember who the openers were there but it was like equally epic and uh i went to both shows we took the kids to the all ages one nice that's the first time that i ever met craig chaos this is pre oh wow barfly being a thing this was just me being a fan of of you know music and bands and we took the kids and uh alec my youngest was probably seven and ended up down there in the middle of the pit and we're my my uh wife and and me and the other two kids were over at the side standing on those like car seats that they had like that were just like sitting in there like seats out of cars that they had sitting over by the wall do you remember this yeah. and i'm standing up on it trying to see alec because he's you know just tall and i just see this circle pit going and i'm thinking he's probably getting to get trampled and all i do is i see this big guy with spikes all over his jacket and a mohawk and he's like throwing arms like this like that oh my god this big fucking ape is gonna probably kill my kid you know and i'm trying to get a better look so I, I stand up on the thing so i can really see down in there you know and i stand up and i can see alec is right in front of craig and alec is skanking and craig is throwing those fists keeping everybody away from alec so alec can skank his ass off Nice. And it was, it's one of those things like whenever I, if I, if I'm at the mail, I've had too much to drink and I run into Craig, I always am like, I'll start getting all like, you know how guys get drunk and we start getting like sentimental, you know, yeah. like this dude, <laughs> the first time I met this guy, he saved his life. There goes this guy. That's how I get when I get. That's that get mosh really pit drunk act. Mosh yeah. It's, yeah. It's, I didn't realize Brooks was Irish. Mosh pit savior. It's, yeah, it was really, it, he ended up getting mosh pit he ended up getting on the stage, and Alec was in. He, he was, you know, probably the only boy in 
gymnastics at West Side Gymnastics at Avon. He'd watched the Olympics and thought gymnastics was cool. Instead of doing Little League, he wanted to be in gymnastics. He was the only guy in the class. So he's up there. And then when he went to stage dive off the stage, he like did a flip off the stage and landed back in the pit. And then Andy Fart surfed him out of there. Oh, wow. And crowd surfed him out of there. It's probably just one of the greatest things. It's crazy now. He's like six foot two, big old giant of a dude, 30 years old, you know, but this is yeah. back wow. then. It was crazy. Crazy stuff. One of my happiest indie moments for sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, man. Phil Keller, lack of water. Let's leave it there. Yeah, you'd like the malcontents. They were malcontents good. were awesome. Yeah. Uh, all right. What about you, Mike? What do you got? Uh, Namen Namen. They're from Fort Wayne. Namen? Fort you Wayne Birch. No, I did not. Uh, there's a there's a story Sounds about like them. The they, they played they played like hold on, yeah. pull them up. They played at State Street. They played at State Street on New Year's Eve, and Napier gushed about. And then so I went and watched a video about them. What are they what? like? Compare them to somebody. Talking heads with a girl singer. Wow, that sounds pretty amazing. And that's maybe good. like it's dude, they are fucking. <clears throat> I've never seen them play live. I've watched a video they did on YouTube, and. So that night, it was like 11 o'clock at night or something. I like a uh, friend, Naman Naman, after Jeff's article and uh, chatting with the dude. They're like on tour somewhere after they had played New Year's Eve. They're somewhere on the East Coast. <coughs> and uh, they're getting ready to, there's there's this guy from Kalamazoo, I cannot remember his name, that is, he has a record label and he's in a band called whatever his name is and the beta blockers. So you can look that up, whatever it is, but he just went to Fort Wayne right after they got back and recorded an album at their house. And now he's going back to mix it in Kalamazoo. Anyway, uh, up to, they've only been around a year and uh, I don't know how many times they played in Indianapolis, but um, check out Namen Namen fucking bad ass n-a-m-e-n n-a-m-e-n yep yep okay. yep yep fucking badass and I've, I've not seen them yet but right now there's there's no band i've seen in indianapolis or anywhere honestly these this band is destined for something amazing i'll just say that you haven't seen them i've watched their videos how, how? and i've seen i've seen live videos and i've seen their like their yeah. video their videos are very creative they're fucking badass that's all i can say talking heads but with a girl singer but, me, but more, you, more, you, not just talking heads, but I mean, that's certainly a you partial got me sold. So, when do they book here again? Somebody book them. I, I booked them for a show, sort of booked them for a show uh, at Healer in March for Nuvo, and then I quit. So, that's that's where I'm still booked. The, are they playing in March? I, I gave that to, I gave both shows to Jerica, the show that I booked at, at, uh, okay. at, at, the Mel on February 17th, which is coming up, which is Vess Rutenberg and Extra Blue Kind and this, Uno Gold. Booked it's booked. It's booked. Okay, and and right. Dave Brown told me that 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 Nuvo took it over. So and I and I was told by uh Healer, by Colin Healer, that Jarek had contacted them about taking that show over. So it's been transferred. I do know that. But and that's con confirmed from both venues. Well, it sounds great. I'll definitely yeah. go see him. It's so, uh, show for sure. Yeah. Nam and Nam and Nam and Nam and Healer supposedly sometime in March, but that date I don't know the date because I I'm not I didn't I just initiated that. But <laughs> the, the, there is a date. Website. There is a date, February seventeenth, at the Mel that has Vest Rutenberg and Extra Blue Kind and Uno Gold. Hell yeah! So, so my favorite band right now. All, good, all, all, all great bands from Indianapolis, by the way. All uh, okay. Uh, so I can't say that I have a favorite local band so many right games. now, so many but I will tell you, there's a band that I saw at the Melody Inn a couple weeks ago, and they're coming here in a couple weeks, and they're it's fucking a, badass. The Lapel. Who are they? They're called Southbound Beretta. Oh, they were terrific. Oh, I've that heard that was of, a great show. Not seen, but heard. Uh, I love those guys. You should have Phyllis Holy on here. Shit. You yeah. should have Phyllis on here sometime. Holy shit! Yeah, they blew me away. I love those too. They were yeah. great. 
I was like, I'm really glad I booked these guys six months ago. <laughs> that was ingenious. <laughs> Little did I know. Like, holy shit. Molly Hatchet covering Motorhead. That was my comment to you, I think, that night. So the, this how we met Cody, the me drummer. Oh yeah. Yeah. We had a uh we had a podcast at the Melody. I mean that as a compliment. Maybe somebody thinks that's a dig. I don't know, but I think it's a compliment. What what was it? Molly Hatchet covering Motorhead. That's what I thought oh. they thought it was like. Molly Head. Molly Hatchet. Uh but we were doing a podcast at the back of the Mel because uh i had a show that day and we interviewed uh big gorgeous from california also dope band they're on instagram too facebook all that shit uh but they just happened to like stop in before going to black circle and we like interviewed them too so eventually we just booked booked them to come on the show how did it go broadcasting from the mail how does that work uh, the same way here, just was well, it a little bit that right? without it's, all it, it's a little bit awesome more chaotic banter on the world or whatever. <laughs> um, and shit. It's, it's, I mean, we've done it twice, two or three times now. All right, and you do a ball of shows. I was so on, on me, son of a bitch, man. In between gigs, or what? where are you, Peter? Yeah, or, or yeah. before it starts. They do that broadcast during, from Nevermore yeah. too. That Nevermore show you guys were broadcasting live from that show. So, okay, yep. basically anybody dumb enough to spend $60 a month with StreamYard, okay, <laughs> all you need is a cellular unit or two or three or four. <laughs> Maybe uh, you should run your show off of a laptop, but you don't have to. You could just fucking willy-nilly. It's pretty simple. Running a show? No. I didn't say running a show. I said uh, do it like do it at, like out and about it's just oh, like, it's, oh i see I it's see. the same as this it's just we don't use mics you know it would be dope though and you're definitely be dope upon upon the wi-fi signal it wherever be. it is that you're at man can dream how's your uh how's your say like your voices pick up on the phones and whatnot do you use one microphone or do you use believe it or not them? like iphones are really yeah, good when it comes to mics i mean and yeah. like whenever i shoot video of bands Man, the music sounds yeah. so fucking good. I yeah. like it does I don't work for you, iPhone yeah. or Apple or none of those cocksuckers, but man, they do make a, a mean yeah. fucking mic in those uh newer iPhones. So iPhones, not only is the mic good, but the thing about the iPhone circuit is there is a compressor on it and there's a limiter on it, and that is why it never distorts. You can be in front of a loud ass band right in front of the fucking stage, it is loud as fuck. And you go back and listen to it, and it sounds awesome. And it looks awesome. Even the cheaper, earlier version of iPhones. iPhones have always had superior audio and video. Always. Mm -hmm. To answer your question, though, because you asked, you said to run a show. Run a show is a different uh, ball of wax. Run show is, is another different ball of wax. Yeah. And I'll tell you when it's really hard. Is when Mike Mankey's on. I'm sorry. It's impossible to run. I should have been typing. I'm joking. I, 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 to be honest I'll with you, my phone out to be real though, I'm not Mike. You're not a new sensor. Anything like that. I don't mean <laughs> to make it sound that way. I'm just picking on you a little bit. Uh, you do bring great energy to the comment section as well here. But having more than a few people on the mics is what kills. Not you. I told you. Never. People just, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It's not even about the mics, really. I'm using that figuratively. <laughs> it's more like a bunch of motherfuckers with microphones <laughs> sitting around a circle, <laughs> drinking and probably doing drugs. Where's the whiskey? Part? You manage that Isn't shit. Like a, all right. Like you got to keep those numbers around. down. Usually. Usually. Yeah. I mean, where's the whiskey bottle part? It, it's in my man. I brought a hurricane, but I can't. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> should I should I even talk about it? Nah, you don't need to. Nah, I think yeah, thing. it's already said and done. Just the eyes in the room are like, there's a reason why there's a bottle of whiskey. But uh, is it because of my 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 green scarf? No, it's because you were you had two responsibilities, Mike. <laughs> you were to bring blow right and booze. <laughs> blow and booze. Wait, wait, wait. Get wait. shot the fucking ball, Mike. Get shot the ball. No pun intended. Now he's blowing the microphone. <laughs> Brought to you by it's a weird point. noise is that somebody you that's by choking. <laughs> <laughs> is that a is that an Indiana one? It is. It is. It is really hard to run no, these no, things with multiple voices, <laughs> though, for sure. Uh, 
I really love doing this stuff. And I'll tell you, if we're going to talk about it, let's just talk about it. We're trying to expand. We have two other parties that want to do podcasts. We have the equipment and everything else that I downgraded earlier. <laughs> this shit's, it is not easy and it is expensive yeah, to do this. I have recording. So we want to grow. We want, we want a podcast dedicated just to our art scene. Yeah. That'd be All cool. right. Mm-hmm. I'm like, like, we'll talk about it, Wayne. Just the artwork. Uh, but that's, the visual in, art, that's the in the works. Visual art, the visual and art. And then we have, we have another podcast in the works and it's two other artists and it will be focused on the indie metal and the hardcore scene. Interesting. But we need facilitation. We need a facility. We need a studio. I have recording so that studio is, and we have, Square. we have some things worked out maybe, but money. We want it costs we're about money. money. Yeah, the, the world is expensive. So you can cash up as a hip wreck ship that's dollar sign you got your couple of sponsors there have you thought about <laughs> have, and i don't know if they'd be interested but how, have we, you thought have you thought about uh uh hitting indie cd and vinyl up for to, sponsorships yeah um, sponsorships what about sponsorship because because two two things i'm just thinking two and again uh, i i i'm probably i'm talking out of church here because i have no they might just be like fuck you we're not interested in this but just an idea to me i know they recently got a second facility that they've just got just oh really yeah they've got like it's not a store it's like a, a, it's, a warehouse it, it's like a storage unit but they've got it all set up like a game room and shit inside oh wow i've seen them post pictures of it they're a personal record collection and they're oh, lounge wow. chairs and shit maybe you could do some kind of thing where like you broadcast from there and they're the sponsor and you're plugging you know, whatever you have a five minute segment every week with Andy talking about what the three top you know, selling top albums. records are yeah. or whatever, That's or, a good idea. you know, and I would think if you're trying to monetize it, that they'd be a natural partner. I mean, yeah. they're a, the best hands down, the best vinyl store in town. I mean, to me, they blow square cat and loon out of the water. They're not even close. And, and I, I, I'm sorry. I don't think they're throwing, even close. throwing the beef I don't think out it's even there. Close. I mean, honestly, scale of one to ten if they're ten i would put the other two at like seven or six honestly it's not even close it just isn't in my opinion i believe selection. you i believe you. selection you could tell walk in either one of them you're gonna tell me you're gonna find the same selection no you're right honestly. about that yeah. right. i'm not saying you're wrong right here bro i'm sorry it's just I'm not saying you're wrong it's just true so I, fucking uh they'd be the ones to partner with uh, we need we, we need we need an actual studio they've also that I can give Skinner's keys got to a big other people to do. Lots of live shows. See their shows. Their spellbound thing is huge. They're following on spellbound. Yeah, spellbound is... that, new, that New Year's Eve show at the Vogue. Yeah. I mean, how could you do better than partnering with that? Yeah. So when A squared does, I want, awesome want to kind of elaborate of into what bringing things in and doing big things. I agree with it, but so the whole idea is. Chopped Liver is going to grow into multiple podcasts. And like, if, if you want to go down to the nitty gritty, scheduling the shows, creating the artwork for the shows, all that stuff, we're going to do. You're going to do like a, you're going to turn into a production company and host media. several. Chopped Liver Media. Yeah. And it's all focused on what? Oh, that's right. Our arts and music scene in Indianapolis. It sounds oh, fantastic. Yeah. That's. So, but you need to monetize it for that need sponsors and that's why i think i think choice. that wayne has a, a good choice of all right people. andy if you're watching this <laughs> send, send me an email bro. They'd, send they'd be a good one to talk to in my opinion i think you could probably Jer- talk to Jerica thinks too. that mike needs his own cooking show I, I don't want that. a show. I I don't. Do you I even know I, how to cook? She said, "I'm a great <laughs> fucking cook." I'm joking, bro. Wow. You know, Mike, Mike does. yesterday does. he said or, or, tomorrow. Oreo Jones has Just a cooking show. Is anybody do it. Cooking show? Local know. rapper Oreo Jones has a cooking show. Has anybody watched that? Let's he's do lunch with Oreo co- Jones. I have Jordan not. Monshine has yeah. his own cooking show sometimes. I, w- I went on it and yeah. and, air- and filmed an episode, <laughs> and he never aired it. So I'm guessing my food must have been terrible. <laughs> I mean, it was probably 10 years ago, and my episode never aired. So, <laughs> Only your episode? I don't, know, I, don't, I don't know how many he's aired, but other I ones aired you. after mine, and he never <laughs> he aired mine. Down so the entire- all- all I'm guessing is it just wasn't very funny or mm-hmm. it was, I don't know what, who knows what happened, but I went on there. Anybody early, had early anybody days. eaten any of Jordan Monshine's cooking? So on 9-11, I was a senior. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> just, just kidding. I'm just kidding. I've been hanging out to that one for a minute. <laughs> 
Uh, I have had Jordan's uh, cooking, and he it, it is looks excellent. It yes, looks great. It's very good food. Very good food. For sure. I, I'm guessing Jordan's food's pretty good too. Very good. Yeah, he's served. He's I've served uh, yet, punk rock side a few times. Seen it. Seen it. Pictures. And I've stuff, only and seen it looks like he vi- knows what he's talking about. Yeah. I'm anxious to try it, Cooking but I'm cool. also super, super picky about barbecue, it's cool. and so Cooking's I'm cool. hoping that it lives up to what I think it's going to taste like, because I am really picky about barbecue. Me too. There ain't nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of good barbecue around mm-hmm. Indiana, but there's only a little bit of great barbecue. I've not had great it. barbecue. Well, no, I've not had great barbecue Trax, in Indiana. Tracks barbecue I've had good. At, at the Scarlet Lean Brewing Building in McCordsville is uh, probably McCord's the best I've had. And Fat Dan's is probably the second best. Of course, it was like not too far yeah, from dances. here yeah. in the Those luscious the loins too. lapel. A lot of the other ones that, that people recommend me, I'm like, oh, you got to go try. There's a place called Rusted Lapple. Silo in Lisbon. I live Lapeel. in Brownford. Like, oh, you got to go to Rusted Silo. I went up and had it. It was, you know, it was the Applebee's riblet platter. It wasn't anything special. It wasn't anything special. <laughs> I'm trying to think of this place in Westfield. There's a lot of places like that. I have I have a, I have like, a it's okay, okay. It's not bad, but Single, my barbecue so home's just as good. Single favorite barbecue. Let's just talk about ribs. Single best rib you've ever had anywhere is it's the the barbecue place. I can't remember the name. Applebee's it's, it's next to the hotel. That, <laughs> next to the hotel the that Martin Luther King got assassinated <laughs> at in Memphis. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. damn! Yeah, yeah when you Memphis, park in the parking lot to go on the Memphis Martin Luther has King amazing door, ribs, and you come out the rib place is right there. Memphis has and it was ribs. killer. It was very good. Yeah. Okay. I don't mean it was just killer. It wasn't a play on words about the assassination. Oh, but was, there's bump. a food truck that sits down uh, across from the Arby's downtown, like that Arby's and Subway right there. Mm. On the food South truck Street? that sits across the street from them that does like rib tips and shit. Near the white ribs has good the sauce, pixie lish, but that's pretty good. It. But hit that. I do love their sauce truck. though. Their sauce is good. That's I the buy their sauce by the Indy. by the little tiny jug. Uh, when I'm yeah. barbecuing at home to impress people with my barbecue. Yeah, their sauce is good. <laughs> yeah. My I've favorite. I've had Rosie's. Where's Rosie's at? Pixie Lish. Rosie's? Where's Rosie's? I don't know. King Ribs. Sounds like a strip club and a strip club that has Rosie's. If it's ribs, a strip club with Rosie's, <laughs> <thing. laughs> we're going on the way Jerica, home. Jerica, if she says it's a Jerica, strip club, I will do a cooking show. We're going to Rosie's yeah. for some I will do a live podcast <laughs> cooking show. Uh, Jerica. The barbecue I was thinking of, it's, there's a place and you can come called 32 in Westfield called Hoffa's. I'll make her And it's amazing. It's Never had fucking it. so good. Westfield? Hmm. It, okay. It's Westfield on 32, across from Domino's. Right. Hoffa's. It is good. I they don't just, know if it's amazing. I get up there. It is I good. Think it's oh, oh, oh. Jackie, Jackie Lawson says a Mankey versus Jordan Monshine cook off. Yeah, yeah, it's been up there for a while. He's, I didn't. I just know. I, I just. The I, there, I'm just noticing things <laughs> as I notice them. My mind is somewhere other than the screen. When I'm jabbering about. Sorry. Mike, you're a scientist. What former former? What do they use to keep gummy bears re- together? Recovering scientist. Recovering. Pectin, pectin, what? pectin, pectin, pectin. Not how you say my last name at all. <laughs> I thought your last. I thought it was. I thought it was. I thought it was the. I thought it was your name and like the Pectin Valley Boys. Isn't it the Pectin Valley Boys? Are you related to Mark Pennington? <laughs> From oh my god! <laughs> he's an anchor on the X Men comics. X Men comics, sure. Yeah, that's he's, my... he's from the same area of Ohio as me and it Jack. Was my, I grew up with my... and, uh, yeah. John and Jack. What's up? I heard my name. <laughs> There's a guy named Mark Pennington that lived in the same area as you and me and your brother. Oh, okay. Who was an anchor on the X Men comics? And I was asking if he was related. There's a town <laughs> called County. There's a town called Pendleton, not too far from here. Where, that's right. Where Rob Andres lives, mm-hmm. Pendleton. Ish. He lives in Greater Pendleton. Maybe. I hope everybody's Pendleton writing this down. If you want to That's stalk you and or kill Robo, if you want, if you want to kill Robo, he either lives, he either lives, he either lives mm-hmm. you should get the cousin in Greater or Lesser Pendleton. They're out of Pendleton. I don't think so. Get the cousin brothers. Oh, yeah. well, the they cousin brothers are, are great. Are we they're still doing their podcast? Powergrass. <laughs> I, I don't know. They, they do originals, but they, they do a lot of covers, and they'll the, do like bluegrass covers of nine inch nails and shit. Yeah, they're great. The, yeah. the cousin brothers are awesome. Yeah, they're fantastic. I've had them on a lot. Of, they did my second Elvis show that I ever did, you know, 21 years ago. Wow. And what's his name? Uh, Vic from the cousin brothers bought a bedazzler. And bedazzled his bib overalls from top to bottom like a fucking Elvis outfit. It was oh, yeah. amazing. Wore the Elvis glasses. 
and <laughs> it was fantastic. Oh, wow. It was fantastic. Hey, yeah. Is that the bass player singer? Yeah. The, the main dude? Yeah. Pennington. What's the worst show you've ever played that's came, that, that comes to mind? The worst oh, show. Like, yeah. It doesn't have to be like the worst show oh, you ever yeah, played. You. Like, kind of like hitting a deer on your way wise, back from the yeah, show. Experience the worst wise. show I The worst there. experience. Ran out of beer before we even got there. <laughs> then I had a deer. bar five hours away. It's in Illinois. It's up in north. I can't remember what it's called, and I shouldn't name drop, but it's Jimmy's Bar and Grill. Fuck that place. Is that with a J or a G? <laughs> you know what? Uh, fuck J. Jimmy. And his Jimmy's bar, Jimmy's and bar and his grill. grill. Fuck that fuck place. That dude. I've heard uh, bad things about Jimmy. It's a biker bar. We booked up there Halloween last year. I think it was the first full band show. So it was the first time I was bringing the band out. We get all the way up there. There's a band playing from Indianapolis. They double booked. We had it out up to the point of where I'm like, are you guys even going to give us any gas money or anything? And they said, no. So my drummer said fuck you brutus beefcake talking to this big like swelled up guy that came out it was a real like uh like trump headquarters uh <laughs> biker trump bar man <laughs> they had a stand up a cardboard cut out of trump like you walk through the door <laughs> to go to the bathrooms and he's just standing there like oh. shaking your like, hand with his blue tie i'm surprised they didn't make it taller yes. but uh they they yeah we drove five hours to play a show and then basically got told well sorry Wow. wow yeah that's that, that was fun uh but you know I, I was always told if they refuse to pay then you start taking things until they uh <laughs> oh. pay you or you have enough money. the five finger death so, punch the five uh, finger death punch shut up <laughs> <laughs> that band that band is terrible is awful. they're terrible so yeah that, that was a that was a fun show to play when yeah what's the worst show you've ever been to the worst Ooh. show i've ever been to comes to mind <sighs> i won't really say worst, <laughs> but the one i remember that's like a crazy thing that happened was i remember again before i knew everybody before i was a uh you know before i was barfly when i just was going to shows i remember going to this show at radio radio and um i think it was a mod night event but i might be wrong and it was a band Dave Jablonski was in, but it wasn't Marmoset. It was like uh, Great Big Huge. Did Great Big Huge, okay. yeah, that was. And so they were playing, and Jablonski's like rocking out, moving. He's real animated, <laughs> and he moves around, and he he hits like the base the base stack with with his Gretsch, and he busts the neck off his <laughs> guitar, and so he just decides he's gonna go full like London Calling album. <laughs> And he goes off the stage and he smashes the guitar on the floor. And Tufty loses his goddamn mind. I don't even know who Tufty is back then, you know, but just, he comes up there and he grabs him by the back of the shirt and he starts pulling all the mics out of the speakers and he shut the show down and threw everybody out. No, the other two other bands are supposed to play and everybody just fucking left. And we were like, do we get our money back or what? It was this crazy ass moment, you know? And uh, that was one of the craziest things I remember. So was that, was, that was a Jablonski story? Yeah. And you can tell he's just like, well, my guitar's busted anyways. I might as well do this crazy That's, moment. Yeah, I meant it. And yeah, it was <laughs> it was bad. It was a bad scene because I'm sure Tufty was like, this wood parquet floor that I just put in or whatever. You know what I mean? And yeah, he it was he lost his mind. It was funny. And I was like, what the hell? That's a Damn. great story. Yeah. That is a great story. I'll tell you the first time that I realized that Tufty was Tufty that I didn't like who he was was um I was there watching it was uh who's the who's the band uh from Bloomington Mike she the female drummer that went on to big things oh that, uh, uh miss uh mysteries of life yeah, yeah mysteries of life was playing and one of the bands that was opening uh Mark Cutzinger was in one of the bands that was opening and I see him up there and i recognize was it united states three it might have been mm -hmm. but mark cuts cutsinger is playing and he's got his fucking kaja goo goo haircut right and even though he's like 103 years old and well, i'm that like was, that was a long time ago, and i'm like said to somebody you know i elbow somebody and i was like is that guy that's playing drums up there is that the the guy that used to be the drummer in the zero boys yep 
And they're like, yeah. And I said, oh my gosh, I wish I'd again, I was not bar fly or anything. Then I was just going to shows, you know, <laughs> I'm like, and I was like, man, I wish I would have known that I would have brought my zero boys vinyl album and had him sign it. I loved the zero boys. And the guy goes, well, you know, the guy that owns this bar is Tufty from the Zero Boys, the bass player. <laughs> and, of course, a Tufty's lost a bunch of weight. Like, this was pre-heart yeah, attack. A lot of weight. This was pre-heart attack Tufty when he probably weighed, like, 360 pounds or something, right? He was big. And to me, it looked, you know, on the back of the album cover, Tufty's, like, 19 years old, and he looks like a fucking GQ model or something, <laughs> right? And so I'm just like, that's the Liver and so GQ. it was like somebody told me Mick Jagger's been handing me my beer the last six months. You know what I mean? I love the Zero Boys in the 80s, you know? And so to me, moving here from – when I moved here from Ohio, I only knew two things about Indiana music. Mellon Camp was from here, and the Zero Boys were from here. And oh, I, wow. Right off the back, ask people, the Zero Boys still – no, those guys all fucking hate each other. They never do shows. They'll probably never do a show again. They really rough. Now they have, you know? Yeah, I forgot about him. But – uh Michael Jackson. Anyways, that was what I mainly knew. You know? West Montgomery. And, uh, right? and yeah. yeah, I can yeah. give a long list now. Okay. <laughs> but then, you Buffy know. Yet. Baby face. Baby Buffy face. Yet. Yeah. Man child. Right. And Richard so, Edwards. So anyways, they. they Spin here. Spin. It, it was like hearing, you know, that this rock star had been the guy I've been drawing my beer for the last six months. You know, it was really yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And so. He's a great dude. I yeah. Love him. yeah. It's crazy to like know him now and hang out with him and really drink tequila and all that stuff back then you know my brain was like he was this you know rock star that was reclusive all and rock didn't do stars shows anymore or something all rock stars are people i've had it i've had it happen a few times where somebody came you know always got a camera in my hand so it's happened a few times i had somebody walk up to me and be like hey is that is that danny thompson no <laughs> i'm like yeah From the sloppy seconds. that's danny thompson they're like <laughs> Will you introduce me? I'm like, that's funny. Dan yes. is the sweetest dude. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you the uh, the most famous person I ever met, and I didn't know who they were. I was trying to repair my falling apart first marriage, and we took off for one of these like weekends, like let's trying to fix it. Let's go get a hotel room and bang for three days <laughs> and see if we if there's anything left in this thing, you know. So we're trying to like rekindle it or something, and so we're down in Columbus. And we're at the Hyatt on Capitol Square. And uh, we get on the elevator, and there's this young black kid in the elevator is kind of leaning back, you know. And I recognize him, like, you know, I was like, oh, hey, man, what are you doing out here? And he goes, nothing, just kicking it. And I said, oh, cool, blah, blah, blah. We have small talk. He gets off on his floor. We continue up. Dana, my ex wife, goes, who was that? And I said, you know, I can't think of his name, but I said, she was when I was a manager in the Orville McDonald's, was where I met her. And Orville's a very small high school, as you know, it's a tiny town. And uh, I was like, you know, he went to, I said, he's like a year or two behind you in school. He hung out with blah, 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 blah. I'm naming off people, you know, other black kids that lived in Orville. And uh, she goes, no, yeah, I don't know who you're thinking of, but, you know, she knew everybody. At or That kid did not go to Orville High School. I said, I'm telling you, he, every weekend I had to kick him and his hooligan friends off the parking lot. They'd pull their car in backwards, put the hood up. And she goes, you're thinking of so-and-so. No. You're thinking of this now. I'm, I'm, I'm determined that it's a kid I know from Orville McDonald's. We go upstairs. We're getting ready to go out. I'm getting out of the shower. I, I, this is in the days when you turn MTV on constantly for just background noise. Yeah, you yeah. know. So MTV's still, on. I, I remember She's the doing 80s. girl shit. And I said, "Oh, oh, you got to come see this music video." I said, "It's th this video is hilarious. You got to see this video. L make sure you pay attention to the lyrics. It's very funny." It's parents just don't understand by Fresh Prince, right? We by come who? out where, by Fresh Prince, of, Will of Smith, Bel Air, of Bel Air, right? right. Well, it's before the TV show when it was just DJ Judge yeah, and DJ, the Fresh Prince. And the, the, Fresh the, Prince. The, the song came before the show, and yeah, so true. Anyways, that song is playing. Parents just don't understand. I'm turning it up. We're watching. I said, "This is really cool." And she goes, "That's the guy." So what are you talking about? She goes, "That's the guy you were just talking to." I said, "That's no, that's that's the Fresh Prince. That's not." The guy with the elevator doesn't even look like him. She goes, that's the guy you were just talking to. We're well, still fighting. About that's it, the right? guy that's going to hit Chris Rock in I'm, the face. I'm con <laughs> I am convinced I'm right. <laughs> we go downstairs, ask the concierge to bring our car around. We're, he goes, where are you going? We're going to such a, he goes, you don't need a car. He goes, it's just like three blocks up and one block over. You should just walk. And I was like, okay, you know. So we walk up there and we turn the corner and there's this theater kind of like the Vogue with a big marquee out. And it says, tonight only DJ Jesse Jeff with the Fresh Prince. And I'm like, holy shit. And of course, back then it was like he was like a new guy with one song. But now it's like he's 
one of the most famous people goes, in the world. And I had song. this whole conversation with them, and I thought I was talking to somebody else. I thought I was talking to a kid I kicked off the parking lot yeah, from McDonald's, hilarious. but it was Will Smith. <laughs> that's my brush with greatness. I uh, once was in uh, San Francisco for a neuroscience meeting for a week and a half or something. And uh, there was a Tower of Records not too far from the hotel that I was staying at. So I went down there just like look at records. And uh, across from me, this is, I can't remember what year it was. This is in the mid 90s. Across from me is David Byrne looking at records. And they're and talking, you know, David Byrne solo, the, the talking heads were in town. David Byrne solo was, in, was playing, you know, that night somewhere. I'm just like, <laughs> you know. And casually continue looking at records. And then, you know, he goes up to pay and I go up to pay and I'm standing behind him. I don't say anything, but just like just like David Byrne. And then he goes out, un unchains his bike from a from a telephone pole and then rides off into the fucking sunset. And then he played a show that night somewhere. I didn't see that show. I did see uh, Squirrel Nut Zippers when I was there and I saw... Uh, page and plant play out in the desert somewhere on that trip but i also helped oliver stone look for comic books at san diego did Comic you Wars. really yeah that's awesome I he was love, looking I at love the guys, and he was asking for a series called electra assassin and the guy had it and he he's like do you have any other electra appearances and i said you need to get the one from bizarre adventures number 25 it's uh frank miller's first uh solo thing with electra and he goes oh, i don't need he goes do you have that? And the guy's like, no. I said, there's a guy over here who has a bunch of Marvel magazines. Here, I'll show you. And he went over with me like two aisles over. And I was like, yeah, this is the one. And <laughs> helped him find the book. And that's awesome. at the time, he had the rights to do Electra. It would have probably been a lot better than the shitty Electra movie that came out with So what, what, what era? What era? She was, was, it, was, it was the what same. I remember was the, out. The, it was the same. The, the year that, that I did this with Oliver Stone, it was the same year that the ID4 movie came out, Independence Day. Okay. The same year that came out because I I saw Independence Day that weekend while I was there, so I know it's the same week. So, what do you guys think about the JFK film, Oliver Stone? So, uh, the most famous person that I've ever met by chance, uh, kind of when I was a kid, my uh, dad took us to like a PGA thing. It's it like '97, and uh, one of the golfers that was there, he he swore up and down that he's going to be like some huge star and we literally like you asked jack he's probably watching this shit we chased daniels literally chase tiger woods down <laughs> he's like a teenager at the time to get his fucking autograph and i like first of all didn't want to be there just to be clear okay didn't, didn't really want to not a golf fan well i played golf a little bit but didn't really want to be there I didn't give a shit about all that. It was fucking like 100 degrees out. It's northern fucking Ohio. But, yeah, by a chance, whatever. I happened to meet fucking Tiger Woods. The golf clap. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> coolest, <laughs> coolest ever, though. Punk rock night. Fucking Wee Man shows up. No shit. Totally fucking. What the, like? So it almost sounds cinematic the way this all went down for me personally. Like, what, like how I witnessed it was there's a ruckus at the door i'm at bar trying to get a drink and i look over and i'm like i have no idea what's going on turn around and then it gets louder and louder and louder and to the point where it's right behind me and i'm like turn around and everybody's like looking at me like that and then i look down and he's standing there crazy and the first thing i said was man do you want a shot he's like no more shots bro his eyes are like bloodshot <laughs> <laughs> it was cool. It was so cool. Were you, since you're the sky guy, Polly, were you? Since you're the sky guy, Polly, were you at uh the Clash Bash, the one where uh, Vic Ruggiero like randomly showed up at like midnight and sung songs with the uh, guys from the Innocent Boys? Oh, really? No. It was really like there. the Slackers were playing someplace else in town, and apparently, like Christian had befriended Vic Ruggiero, oh, yeah. and I was just about ready to leave. It's like one o'clock or something, right? And I'm like looking at my phone and. I look at the door, you know, it's August, so the door's open, it's hot. And I look out there and like I'm like it's like Vic Ruggiero from the Slackers talking to the door guy. What's going on? And I was like <laughs> and then I, I the bands were changing over and Christian comes up, he goes, Are you staying? And I said, Uh yeah, I think so. And he goes, Yeah, you want to stay? I think something special is gonna happen. And I was like, and then they did their set, and then about halfway through, like Vic just got up there and sung uh uh Rudy Can't Fail, but then 
took it into message to Rudy by the special. Oh, oh, nice. And it was, it, it too, was really specials. neat. I've got it recorded someplace on my Facebook. I'll repost it. But That's cool. It was yeah. just amazing. It was very cool. Nice. Very cool. Pennington, you ever met anybody famous? By chance? Odds? Uh, in the Boy Scouts one time. <laughs> Uh, Bill Cosby took us on our camping trip. Mm-hmm. Real shit. Like yeah. Bill Cosby before all that. So it was cool. Like Cosby era, like Cosby yeah, show era. Cosby, you know, sweater yeah. and nice dad. Is yeah. he wearing a sweater? Did you get jello pudding? pudding? No, it was yeah. the camping He's pops. the pudding guy. The pop. some jello pudding. <laughs> pop. Yeah. Pop. No, I did meet Dave Chappelle busking in, uh, busking. in uh, Yellow Springs, Ohio. It's a real sick place, like a few hours from yeah. here. Near Dayton. Yeah. Uh, great spot, but he, I'm busking and he's walking across the street and I see him and I'm like, no fucking way. Like jumpsuit and all, like a couple people behind him, just, you know, shit. and uh, he does like his full lap and he walks around and like pays no mind. Like we kind of talk a little bit and then he just goes and I go to the show I'm playing and I was like, dude, I just met Dave Chappelle. <laughs> fucking pumped oh yeah he's like you fucking he's in here like every other day like, I mean, nobody gives a <laughs> he shit lives like, he, he lives three miles away he lives three miles away i was gonna say i thought he lived yeah. somewhere yeah he's, he's in walking yeah, yeah. distance like he yeah, walks that's somewhere. crazy so it's that's just crazy. it's just to see him come like across the street. i used to go down to yellow springs all the time because right. the one of the oldest comic book stores in the united states owned by this woman there mary alice wilson it's yellow really springs cool ohio spot. and when i when i first opened my comic store I went down, just because I remember from when I was a kid and you'd get the Overstreet Price Guide and there was only a few stores in the country that were just dedicated to only comic books. And that was one of the first ones. And I remember like, I need to go down. So she's in Ohio. I need to like drive down there and like bend her ear and ha- find out like what not to fuck up to make a store last. You know what I mean? And bend her ear for wisdom. And she was pretty cool. You know, she was like probably in her late sixties, you know, I'm sure she's gone now, but, mm. but, uh, yeah, I went down to Yellow Springs many times. There's still a, there's still a comic book shop there. I, I, I bet it's still the there. Dark one. Star yeah. Books, I bet. Yeah. Dark Star Books. Yeah. They have one in Xenium, one in Yellow Springs, but they were started by Mary Alice yeah. Wilson. I'm sure yeah. somebody else. It, she she can't be around anymore. because she She's was there. 127. Yeah, she was like in her late 60s <laughs> when I was meeting her in the early 90s. So she's got to be gone then, I would think. But she was she just she just I just I just checked it on Google. She just celebrated her 127th birthday. <laughs> probably <laughs> if anybody can do it it'll probably be her well, yeah i met dave Chappelle. that was cool hell yeah, yeah. that's so polly too sure i mean um <laughs> yeah i mean uh so i used to well kind of grew up obviously i grew up on the east side over there and uh fucking was at liberty bell quite a bit and like it's just a regular flea market right know? right right yeah. nothing real special about it at all <laughs> <laughs> just a fucking flea market and um like there's these fucking wooden beams that have like these really large sliding barn doors right. on them that like kind of shut off the carpet area from the rest of the flea market so during the week the carpet section's open right but on the weekend they open up the flea market and next thing I know, like I'm, I'm looking over and fucking Rick Smith dunks his head underneath the beam. And I'm just like, like, I'm sure my jaw just had to fucking hit the floor, you know, because I had been watching him quite a bit, you know, um, obviously and stuff. And I was just like, no shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, my mind was blown. Like, and dude is like seriously tall. I mean, the Dunking Dutchman is as tall as you think he yeah. really is in person. I actually you sat know? like two seats Dude. over from him at Alanis Morissette concert. Oh, wow. Yeah. One of, I uh, forgot about that. I didn't talk cool. to him, but I, he was yeah. sitting like just two seats over from me. Yeah, I mean, I didn't talk to him either. So I can't say like I officially met him or anything. But I, I was like, I I mean, he, I, sure. I was starstruck, you know. Right, right, you right. I, I, mean, I, I, have, met, like I have met 10. a few other famous. I was dating a girl. I was dating a girl. I was living in Hobart at the time. Uh, it was like 1987, 88, something like that. Document was the REM album that they were touring on. And I was dating this girl who knew this guy in Chicago who was friends with Mike Mills, the bass player. And uh, so 
we got tickets for the show or whatever. And by the time the show came up, we had broken up, but we still had tickets to the show and we were, you know, friends. So we go to the show and we find out that Mike Mills is a, a huge Cubs fan. So we, you know, go to some random store on the way to the show and pick up a, I think it was at Rosemont Horizon, if I'm not mistaken, or UIC Pavilion. It was at UIC Pavilion document tour 87. Anyway, um, so we go pick up, you know, some Cubs t-shirt somewhere on the way to the show and give it to our friend before the show. And out comes Mike Mills with the fucking Cubs t-shirt that we gave him words at the entire fucking show. And because her friend that, you know, I didn't, don't remember his name. I do remember hers, but don't remember his name. But uh, because her friend was, you know, we have backstage passes. So after the show is over, we go, you know, wherever the fuck they were, you know, sign in. I have a poster. It's in Houston. I have a poster that R.E.M. signed from that tour. And uh, Stipe was really evasive, as you'd predict. Uh, and, you know, in, you know, to himself and an introvert. But... Um, Mike Mills is real friendly. Peter Buck was super friendly. Uh, I don't remember much of an interaction with uh, Bill Berry, but Mill, but but Stipe was like kind of off in the back, and you know, everybody else has like this really sort of frilly signatures on this poster. But Stipe prints really small, S T I P E period, all capital letters. And everybody else is just like you know, fl- you know, nice really rock star, and his is S T I P E period. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> anyway, so I, I guess I met someone famous. Hell yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> Wayne, when, Pennington, when's your next show? <laughs> uh, tomorrow at the Backdoor Pub. Tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> In either Bloomington or. We still have not confirmed. Yeah. Brook, go to Wayne Bennington. Brooktown, <laughs> Bill. Uh, we are at Black Circle. The full band's at Black Circle at the end of the month. It's gonna be a pretty cool show, so come on out. It's gonna be ten bucks at the door, and that is on the twenty seventh. That's a Friday, the twenty seventh. It's gonna be a good time. Black Circle Brewery. Who are you Black playing Circle? with? Black awesome. Circle. Who else is on the bill? Anybody uh, else? Just us. Just yeah. you guys. Oh yeah. wow! So we go in full band. It. So how long is that set gonna be? Uh, we'll probably do two sets, and uh, I think we're playing for like three or four hours. Oh wow! Nice. nice. Yeah. Long ass set. It's a good time. Sets. Yeah, we know how to party. You must have a pretty deep catalog. You can go that far. Uh, we do all originals. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah, we we can do about four or five hours. Wow, nice. Oh, so. that's a. Is that yeah. all? There's re- a lot of bands that have been around longer than you that don't is have. Is that all recorded? Have do you have original material? Is all, all of, of time. Is that is that entire catalog no, recorded? I've got. I'm sitting on like almost a hundred songs. Jesus Christ! I I did something in August. I wrote uh, 30 songs in 30 days. You can find all those on the YouTube channel. Nice, <laughs> badass, <music>. cool. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, I just write a lot. I'm starting to record a little more. I go to Nashville and record with a dude named Rusty Nuts. Uh, he's a great musician. Nashville, Indiana, or Tennessee? Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, we're down there pretty N-U-T-Z? often. Is it N-U-T-Z? Uh, rusty N-U-T-Z. It is nuts. Yep. Uh, like D's, but... <laughs> he's a fantastic dude. He's I'm sure a, he is. He's a great recording engineer. It's a great uh, name, he too. He does all the, the full band stuff. He recorded me and Larry, the album Me and Larry. You can find on the website. Uh, I'm starting to record some stuff with Scott Kern locally. Scott Kern's awesome. Yeah, Scott Kern's fantastic. He works fantastic. with Jethro Easy Field all the yeah, time. Yeah, he works with so many people. Yeah. He does some some killer stuff for the local music scene. Yeah, Jay, he's good. I'm working on a new solo album right now that should be out soon. Be uh, pretty good to get out. And then the band just recorded a, a song about Dale Earnhardt. <laughs> oh. Yeah. That's fun. Junior or junior, it's, junior. What do you? It's got to be the third track <laughs> of your next album. Yeah, the third. That's fucking right. Yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. Uh, that was a good time. I don't know why we wrote it, but it turned out pretty fun, man. It's like a doo wop kind of <laughs> like ballad. I got it. The doo wop balladeers. I got to Yeah, hear we'll this. have it out here soon. Just because Wayne it's Pennington and the doo wop balladeers. You heard it's, it here. It's odd. First a good time though you can find that soon uh, on all streaming platforms just go follow us and whatnot that all that's under the poor valley uh, not the proud valley 
I'm not the proud valet. <laughs> and, uh, Bert, you got a show tomorrow, right? No, Saturday. Well, no, it's uh, not a show, but yeah, it's our an our, event. Our, our, event. Our, yeah, uh, yeah it's just like draw. the guys in 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 the Indianapolis. Peter will be there. Visual art. I everybody I like was group. invited. I'm sorry. We're going to to have a meetup and drink and draw at Center Point Brewing. Tomorrow. Peter is able to From get to seven. Peter will be able to get to that tomorrow, but not here tonight. I'm just, well, hopefully. Well, this can. is a little farther. It is further. I'm not saying it's not. I mean, his car broke down. So I didn't say it didn't. If it, if this is a two week in a row thing. I'm just saying this is the two week in a row thing for Peter. I did not see him on last week's uh, show. He's, he's like, is he's like, he's like, he's, oh, he's pulling man. a Polly. If, uh, I've ever seen pull, Polly. if I have seen anyone pull a Polly lately, it's it's Peter Graves. <laughs> So, <laughs> this Saturday at Punk Rock Night, because every Saturday at the Melody Inn is Punk Rock Night. It's Punk Rock Night. Oh, Scott takes rock over. Night. What can I College. What can I make? Sir, 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 Circle City Deacons. <laughs> and what's the third one, Polly? The other band that's playing with those two bands. <laughs> ah, I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. So yeah, too much of the blood orange. Uh, Mike, do you got a show coming up? No. All right, <laughs> uh, Wayne's. Thanks for coming over tonight. It's yeah, been man. super fun Wayne's hanging bros. out. Wayne's, Wayne's bros. bros, party time! Excellent. Yeah, it's been it's, it's been fun. It's been Wayne's fun. world. We've got uh, Wayne's world. We've got Wayne Birch coming back for the one year anniversary show. I think it's that's gonna be cool. Hell yeah, March. Uh, it's the end March week. It's going to be the actually 49th because there's three. It'll uh, probably be in your new location by then. Huh? Or not. Crossing our fingers. Most likely. Crossing, to fingers. Die. Yep, crossing I mean, our fingers. Hoping to die. We'll see. And, and oh, ho yeah. Hopefully I'm going to paint you live on the air. That'd be cool. You're going to paint him in air? Hey, so like, you can, you sp can, you, can you spray posted. paint a hologram? Yeah, your oh, link, yeah. Wayne. Look at that, WaynePenningtonMusic.com. Yeah. So that's cool. Thank you, Sonia. Yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah. Love you, Sonia. Jay Clyde's. I'm going to Jay Clyde's. It's on my way home. So uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Kara, you okay. Just tell everybody where you're where you're going. This is where life. everybody goes after this show. <laughs> that's, after this is like everybody a semi, goes to Jay Clyde's. This is a, right? yeah. Jay Clyde's in Indianapolis. Yeah, because they it's have an they, hour away. They have karaoke. No, it's not. It's they have karaoke. They have, no, it's not. It, it would took me. Minutes, Jay Clyde's karaoke minutes. night on Wednesdays. Seven every, minutes. not every necessarily, but many nights after this show, Jay Clyde's karaoke. While you're out and about this weekend, be sure to pick up a copy of the new sound check. Is, sound this, check. is this week three? We are uh, paid uh, advertisers. So check it out. It's got all the fucking shows. All of them. In print. I like zines. I, I collect them. Everything's okay. <laughs> oh. Everything's going to be just fine. Anyways, so yeah, uh, check those out. They uh, they get dropped off every week. Uh, they're at Chatterbox, Melodians, uh, State Street Club, Black Circle, and wherever the fuck I drop them off, because uh, I do what I want with the ones that we pay for. So, but yeah, uh, you can probably find them at J. Clients, by the way. Maybe at Indie CD and Vinyl, maybe at 20 plus four and more in, in uh, Broad Ripple. That's where I like to take them. Anyways, so yeah, check those out. Um, ooh, what do we got left, guys? I think we, I think we thanked them. Uh, I guess how many, Mike, how many people Mike, own space thanks, monkeys? Thanks for coming on the show space tonight, monkeys? you son of a bitch. <laughs> he's he's like, I'm gonna stop by. Motherfucker shows out ten minutes before the show. I'm like, you for real, bro. I, I, Let me get your mic. Let me get your headphones. Let me rewrite re -re all the sound. But thanks for coming out, man. It was fun. You got some good stories down there too. Good stories tonight. Good stories. It's been fun. So uh, if Robbo was here, you know what he'd say, right? He'd say, turn off your headlights. Turn off your headlights. <laughs> <laughs> if you see antlers, hit your gas. Uh, no, he would say, turn on your headlights. Safety first, right? Um, don't talk to strangers, right? Shop smart. 
Shop at Smart, right? Yeah. And uh, what's a what's, great grocery store? Why don't you why, why don't you take the clothes there? Uh, we are the unheard. We are the overlooked. We are Chop Liver. Chop Liver is recorded in front of a live studio audience. You take it away. I'm the new